यस सर नमस्ते मनोज जी हाँ जी नमस्ते ममता जी कैसे हैं आप गॉट इट एब्सोल्युटली गुड एब्सोल्युटली गुड नेहा जी नमस्कार प्रवीण जी नमस्कार हाय हाय नमस्कार मनोज जी नमस्ते प्रवीण जी कैसे हैं आप बढ़िया ये प्रवीण जी संडे को भी नहीं आराम से बैठने देते मैंने इनको बोला करो स्पेशली जो हमारी वुमेन क्लीन है इनको बहुत काम होता है घर पे लेकिन कहते नहीं सब के काम करेंगे चलिए काम नहीं करोगे तो जो है लेजीपन आ जाएगा प्रवीण जी आप मान के चलो हम जेंट्स लोग तो घर का कोई काम करते नहीं है लेकिन हमारी वुमेन क्लीन जो है इनको घर का बहुत काम होता है सर घर वालों को करने दो ना नहीं ठीक है घर वालों घर का काम चारों को दे हैव क्या कहते हैं ना और एक और एक मिला के इनके पास ग्यारह ड्यूटीज होती है अब ममता जी को भी बुला लेते हो नेहा जी को भी बुला लेते हो तो देखो ये तो है सर मनोज जी भी आर ओके मनोज जी भी आर ओके 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 ममता जी ने आज को देखे ना वो जो है डबल ड्यूटी देती हैं आप तो सिंगल ड्यूटी दे रहे हो चलिए चलिए और जस्ट फॉर द सेक ऑफ फन चलिए प्लीज हां रश्मि जी भी आ गई हैं गुड इवनिंग रश्मि जी हां रश्मि जी हम आप ही की तारीफ कर रहे थे यू नो आई वाज फेवरी की मेरी जितनी यानी कि वुमेन कोलीग्स हैं आप प्रवीण जी संडे को भी इनको बुला के इनसे काम करवा रहे हैं जबकि इनके पास ऑलरेडी घर का भी काम होता है एक ही दिन आपको मिलता होगा शायद घर का काम करने के लिए मनोज जी इनसे मत कहिए नहीं कि वेश रखा मैंने आज का संडे <laughs> <laughs> ममता जी आप सुन रहे हैं या क्या कहते हैं आप बीच में नहीं हो सर ग्रेट चलिए चलिए is parveen ji is is the hero of the whole show actually ha ji ha ji so thank you parveen ji for all the efforts that you put in thank you hum to ye dekh rahe hain hum to ke jo hai lakshmi aur saraswati dono ek sath hain abhi hai ba i am i personally have to say i am a great admirer of you the uh, combo hai pe kahi alag alag hoti hain basically to but yahan jo hai dono ek hain Is Mr. Parveen, am I visible? No, sir. Your camera is off. Camera is off. From where? Okay. Camera is off. Okay. Can you join?
Mukul Sahai ji has also joined us, no? Yes. <coughs> Good evening, madam. Namaste. How are you? Fine, fine, fine. Thank you for being there, sir. Thank you. Thank you, madam. Thank you. Mukul ji, namaskar. Welcome. Namaste. Namaste. Thank you. Thank you, Manoj ji. Thank you. Parveen ji, I think in the next few minutes, we can actually, Rashmi, we can keep on talking. Because we have the honorable presence of Virendra Gupta ji already. So, okay. Can we can start the session now, ma'am. Yes, I think in just next two minutes at 14.05. Next two minutes, we'll start, start the session. Yeah, 16.05. Uh, you must be. Uh, 16.05. Okay. Sorry, sir. Sorry, sir. Now, if you want to answer your question. Huh? Rashmi, please mute everyone. Yeah. I think Priya Jain. I'm meeting. I'm meeting. I'm meeting. गुप्ता जी आज आप कहा है बॉम्बे है आज आई रश्मि छावचर्य We are starting the session, ma'am. Yes. I, Rashmi Chaucharya, on behalf of Jipa organization, welcomes you all to the lovely evening of Sunday. Uh, in this uh, and today's topic of webinar, as we all know, is insolvency resolution process for personal guarantors. So, uh, this is the uh, this uh, insolvency resolution of personal guarantors. As we all know, that this is a need of the hour, and we are getting many cases allotted by NCLT. in kolkata these days and uh, now the, the because uh, it is a, a, a strict difference from cip processes and we are just uh, we, we need to have uh, you know uh, much deliberations on this that how the ip has to go forward in these cases how the banks have to go forward in these cases so this is a much needed uh, uh, webinar for today and i thank jipa uh, for organizing this especially parveen ji and without wasting much time because all the deliberate uh, all the uh, deliberates all the uh, speakers and the guest of honors are here i I'll ask neha to start the uh, thing neha you can take over now neha yes yes thank you rashmi uh, so uh, today let me first uh, uh, just give uh, give a brief uh, introduction about uh, a gipa professional association uh, it's a company uh, which is formed under section 8 and with the main object uh, it it uh, uh, provides awareness and facilitation service for business professional and students in india and abroad uh, mr praveen jain is one of the director of uh, jipa and uh, ca uh, D, uh, ritu rasogi is the vice chairman of uh, uh, jipa professional association and uh, today uh, uh, mr praveen ji and ritu ji both are with us in this webinar so i'll just give a brief introduction of mr praveen kumar jain uh he is a fellow ca and ip also he is a registered valuer and uh, he has done various uh, courses like a uh, certification like on master on business finance uh, by icai also uh, you know fafd course of icai he is a senior partner of uh, uh, praveen kumar jain and associates he is also a founder of a uh, uh, gipa professional association he is a director in various uh, company which is providing consultancy service Uh, Ritu ji is a CA and IP and uh, having uh, more than twenty five years of experience in the area of financing, restructuring, revival of sick industries. Uh, she has uh, handled number of cases as an insolvency professional. So with this, I request Mr. Praveen ji uh, to welcome and introduce our uh, chief guest, guest of honor, Honorable uh, Shri Virendra uh, Gupta, uh, who is a formal technical member of NCLT. Uh, Mr. Praveen ji, over to you. Okay, thank you, Nehaji. Uh, I welcome to Sri Mukul Ji, Dr. Mukta Manani Ji, Nitin Shunji Ji, uh, Manoj Anand Ji, Rashmi Ji, Nehaji, Ritu Ji, uh, and participants. And I also welcome to Sri Sridhar Gupta Ji uh, and uh, say about something about him. Sridhar uh, Gupta Ji is uh, 61 years old and published chartered accountants and legal professional. Uh, having rich judicial experience as well, he has completed his tenure as member technical uh, NCLT member on second July two thousand twenty two. In his distinguished career spanning over eighteen year thirty eight years, the journey began as a practising CA in nineteen eighty six. 
which continued till 2005. During this period, he completed various assignments in the field of auditing, taxation, business advisory services, comprising of techno commercial legal analysis of projects, corporate restructuring, valuation, designing, and implementation of SOP manual for different business <coughs> verticals. In October 2001, he was appointed as a CEO of Messrs. Action International Limited, engaged in operating drilling rigs. During his tenure, the company drilled the best ever offshore well at that point of time. He also carried out salvage operations, one of the rigs owned by the company in the most trying circumstances. In March 2005, he was appointed as accountant member at ITAT, which position he held till July 2010. As member ITAT, he disposed of approximately 4,000 cases. So 4,000 cases uh, pertaining to direct tax law and more than 99% of his order had been upheld by higher judicial firms. Approximately 300 uh, orders where he as an author or co-author have been reported in all leading tax journals. In July 2010, he started legal consultancy in Mumbai and continued as such till September 2014. During this period, he arrived many large clients, including uh, NM Security Private Limited, a leading merchant banker, and capital market utility of the country. The area of the consultancy broadly consisted of tax planning, corporate law steps relating to merger, demerger, and other forms of corporate restructuring and compliance to savvy regulations. In October 2014, he took a challenging assignment of President and Chief CEO of CMAC Limited, a Mumbai based district company engaged in running of BP GSP in the offshore. The primary task was to transform the company from multinational to family owned, professionally managed company. I, mean, I, was I, I am requesting that you could just read one liner for everyone because of Virendra Gupta ji's presence and Sahai ji here. I think we should quickly start. Okay, just just one. Just one in, line. July, in July 2019, he assumed charge as member technical national company terminal. Okay, okay. Virendra Gupta ji's profile. Yes, yes, that is fine. Okay. Uh, over to Saiga, please uh, experience the affair and guide uh, your members. Please, sir. Uh, thank you so much. First of all, I would like to pray to Gajananam, Bhut, Galadi, Sevitam, Kapiti, Jambu, Phal, Charu, Pakshinam. Uma Sutam Shog Vinash Karkam Namami Vigneshwar Pad Pankaja. Ya Devi Sarva Bhuteshu Shakti Rupen Sastita Namastasai 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 Namo Nama. Ya Devi Sarva Bhuteshu Buddhi Rupen Sastita Namastasai 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 Namo Nama. Agyan Timurandas Gyananjan Shalakaya Chakshurun Militame Tasme Shri Gurve Nama. Ye Pratna, this is the prayer we should get back to as early as possible because we are not a doer we are only a means and without the background and support and energy of the ultimate power supreme soul we are nothing we are just like pan we do whatever the supreme soul wants to write through us with this opening words i feel my privilege and pleasure to be in company of distinguished professionals, organization, and participants on a subject which is uh, really having a substantial bearing on the CIRP and liquidation of the corporate debtors. Because somewhere uh, uh, it may impact the valuation and the recovery uh, of the debt as well as on the going concern status of the corporate debtor directly and both as indirectly. Which you, as you, everybody is aware that November 2019, these provisions came into force. So without delving upon the background and other things, uh, we have uh, the other speakers and presentations will make all the detailed uh, uh, deliberations and discussions on this. In my, it will be my endeavor to highlight a very few important things which need to be taken into consideration on a broader label. First of all, that is, I, I be, uh, there are certain controversies which are being settled in this respect, which arose from time to time. And recently the Supreme Court has state, settled a major controversy whether uh, proceedings against 
in uh, personal guarantor can be initiated before appro uh, initiating the proceedings against the principal borrower of the, the, the debtor so they have relied on section 28 on that basis it it has been held that the proceedings against the personal guarantors can be initiated irrespective of the fact whether any proceedings against the corporate bo uh, principal borrower are pending or not this uh, raise uh, this is this is based upon the interpretation of the indian contract act 1872 but uh, but uh, it's a purely legal position nobody can dispute it is a settled law but considering the fact that the ibc has got uh, multiple objectives in its preamble whether it would really be in it is a question whether it would be really serving those purposes because if the personal guarantor who is not a promoter or who is not connected with the corporate debtor in any ownership way should he be made liable before such corporate debtor that's a question the answer is itself uh, embodied in section 128 which says the subject to the contract subject to the provisions in the contract so now it it is it becomes incumbent upon all the participants who are whether surety or guarantor or the principal borrower uh, so creditor uh, that to draft the contract to legally bind themselves in such a manner that this liability should not be fastened on the personal guarantor at the first instance before approaching and initiating the proceedings against the principal borrower otherwise it will derail the objective of entrepreneurship development to promote entrepreneurship because nobody would come forward to give guarantee and to get itself in dragged into a financial use financial obligations so this is one thing and another thing is uh, there is the law needs to be take uh, amended because it is 150 year old law and when the scale of business or the ibc regulations in this present format were not existing so suitable changes in the RBI norms is required from both the statutory side as well as rbi to uh, secure that he ultimately all the objects of the ibc are met this is one aspect another important aspect is in section 126 of ibc 2000 uh, indian contract act 1872 it states two situations contract of a guarantee is a promise to perform or to discharge the liability of a person who on his default so there are two situations covered but if you if we deeply go into the nitty gritties of the uh, working of this section then we would notice that no mode of uh, settlement of proper uh, discharge of liability or performance of promise is prescribed meaning thereby in some cases it was held that ki the liability of a personal guarantor should be considered only when it is a li he is liable to pay to the creditor or the lender but there is no such prescription in the section itself so there can be a situation where the personal guarantor to prevent or to see that uh, the principal borrower discharges its obligations under the contract prince lender loan agreement lending agreement arrangement he may also assist of infuse the funds in the corporate debtor so that default doesn't occur in my view that would also suffice the requirement of section 126 so in that sense it will further secure uh, the lenders in one sense the only condition would be such uh, such arrangement should be legally enforceable against the the principal borrower as well as the personal guarantor another aspect which can be which is now settled by interim stay by the honorable supreme court in the gurmeet said gurmeet sodi case recently that the opportunity of hearing is to be given to the personal guarantor before the irp or irp submits its statutory report so that is also a welcome step so that the at least the personal guarantors get their get opportunity one more important aspect is that recently we have seen a judgment on the ncrt kolkata bench the right of subrogation exists in case 
with due regards it needs to be seen whether it uh, complies with the requirements of law well, in, in view of the provisions of section 31 1 read with section 238 of ibc 2016 whether right of subrogation of, that the provision of contract act section 140 stands overruled in view of the decisions of the honorable supreme court in sr steel as well as in ghansham mishra where clean slate is clean slate is to be offered to the resolution applicant and one more aspect uh, is that that the assignment of guarantee debt can whether it can be done even after the approval of resolution plan in some cases certainly it will depend first of all it will depend on the provisions what the resolution plan consists as well as certainly if there is no bar this the assignment of guarantee debt can take place even after approval of the resolution plan because the liability of the corporate debtor under the resolution plan is extinguished not of the personal guarantors which is celebrated judgment of sbi versus as ramakrishnan and thereafter in number of jalalit jain every judgment has said so as far as this uh, one more aspect which need we need to take into consideration whether the doctrine of permissible dele delegated permissible limits of delegated legislation because what is happening we are seeing that in many of amendments of substantial nature are being run through changes in the regulations so that is an area which the uh, uh, the government and legislature has to see whether that is permissible and to what extent in the given in the current form of provisions of section 196 bracket 1 bracket t read with section 240 which is, defines the scope of powers of ibbi so with these opening remarks i uh, take i say once again express my thanks and uh, open the forum for uh, mr pravin jain to take it forward from it, this place thank you sir uh, for your kind uh, words and neha uh, ji uh, please carry uh, carry on yes mr pravin ji thank you sir so uh, in today's webinar we have some of the best professional handling the matter practically we have shri mukul uh, uh, sahai gm zonal recovery center punjab national bank uh, dr uh, mamta binani ji Uh, Mr. Nipun Singh Ji and Mr. Manoj Anand Ji. So, uh, with this, uh, we welcome uh, Sri Mukund uh, Sahai Ji, and uh, I'll just give a short introduction of him. Uh, Mr. Mukul Sahai Ji is the GM of uh, Zonal Recovery Center uh, in PNB Delhi Zone. He joined OBC in nineteen ninety three and worked as a uh, probationary officer. he worked in operations credit recovery in different place like gujarat mp haryana delhi punjab before working in delhi recovery zone he handled the recovery and resolution verticals of amritsar zone pnb so uh, also uh, i welcome dr mamta benani ji and uh, she is a uh, national past president of institute of company secretary she was a practicing company secretary for over 21 years she is the first insolvency professional in the country and has handled many insolvency cases uh, she has backed so many awards uh, like the jusani awards and uh, hello kolkata awards in 2020 she has been confirmed with the insolvency law award winner by the international advisory expert also we have uh, advocate and ca uh, mr nipun uh, singhvi ji who is the author of the book rara and uh, he is a leading legal practitioner also a cnip mr manoj kumar anand ji who is a president of all india insolvency professional association i request all of them to take the chair i also request uh, uh, dr mamta benani ji to take chair as a chairman for this session and request her to begin the technical session uh, mam thank you yeah sure go to you yeah thank you so much thank you i think with uh, with a very very over overall arching session or maybe if i can say so it's a dosage of what mr virendra gupta ji gave us the honorable technical member 
of the Honorable NCLT. I have been very fortunate to actually work under his guidance as such in the court because he was one person I have seen that who always encouraged to my uh, knowledge uh, because as a bar member, as a vice president of the bar, what we always used to see that whether the younger members are coming forward to present their matters. Honorable Virendra Gupta ji was one who always used to encourage those members to come forward, place their deliberations, work on their own brief. Sometimes, you know, people when they used to just come to take dates, Gupta ji used to say, why don't you have the papers? Why don't you uh, forward your arguments? But I think that has really helped to set the tone of uh, our Honorable NCLTs. And then Gupta ji also, I think, took the mantle forward in Ahmedabad NCLT, where uh, he, one good thing about Gupta ji, what we have always uh, appreciated in the bar is he's very particular and specific with his questions and queries. So, you know, maybe he'll say many, many things, but he'll just point out that very thing which we don't want to talk about. And he will ask that, please tell me what is it all about this particular point? So he, you can't just be on a hide and seek mode when Gupta ji is in the is in the chair. So thank you, Gupta ji, for being with us, for guiding us all through. I think the tone that you set all, with all of us and the guidance that you have given to the generations to come, it will really help the bar to actually raise their levels of argument and even homework. Thank you for that. Thank I, you so much. Thank you so much for your kind words. We had uh, Mr. Sahai yesterday in the IPA meeting also. We had a meeting of IPA yesterday. I think Mr. Sahai actually took us through how the banking norms works. And he was very, very honest to even quip at times that this is something which the larger body has to take care of. But he appreciated the points that got, got deliberated yesterday. Thank you, Mr. Sahai, to really take out time yesterday also and even today. Thank you. It's a mean task. We understand regularly for two days, but thank you so much for giving us the honor. And straight away, let's get into the uh, mode of understanding and deep diving in the person guarantor mode. Uh, two, three things, and then maybe I'll request, uh, of course, the panelists to get into it. At the outset, let me thank Jeepa and especially Mr. Parveen Jain to really organize this so very well and to relentlessly work on achieving the objectives of the organization. Who doesn't know Mr. Nipun Singhvi and uh, who doesn't know even Mr. Manoj Anand? And all of us are known people at our own rights. Rashmi and Neha, thank you for all the efforts. So as a person character, I think, you know, when we do insolvency cases, either as an insolvency professional or as an advocate, one or two things which we have been very careful about is to guide the other side, that is the directors and the suspended board members, that please be vigilant as to what is happening. Sometimes they feel that when they are getting a seat to sit, they feel that it's not required. We don't have any say. We are just there as a mute spectator. But that is not true. They have been given a right to participate. And, and I'm so fortunate that today I have Mr. Virendra Gupta ji, who will actually correct us if we are just going haywire with our basic understanding. So they are under the definition of a participant. And when we say participant, so they are absolutely eligible in law to participate in the deliberations, but no voting rights has been given to them. So when they deliberate on any issue, they also may like to mention particularly that we would like to get this minimized. Just for an example's sake, if there is a valuation matter which is being deliberated after the resolution plans have come in, and if they have understood that uh, the, the, the plan is giving a, a valuation which is you know maybe just uh, 100 minus X, which is coming to maybe one, just for an example, say. So they should get, and Mr. Manoj Anand and me have, we have been very, very particular to say this, that they should actually get that particular dialect noted in the minutes, that pani ke bhav mein, this asset is going away. And this is not true discovery of the price. So it may so happen that even for that matter, because after the resolution plan comes, you can actually talk about and deliberate about the fair value and the liquidation value even in the COC. So the, uh, the point that we are driving home is they should be vigilant to their rights. They should come at each of the meetings. And when the law is giving you a seat, who are you to just say that, no, no, nobody listens to us. We are not treated well, et cetera, et cetera. Second is sometimes if the COC tells you to 
some kind of you know exit from the room for a while i think you should be generous and maybe sensitive enough to do that okay so uh, I, and what we do as insolvency professional that we write in the minutes that we had requested the director to please give us few minutes uh, and and requested him to recuse himself from this portion of the meeting so that we are also aware that we had requested him to do so and he is also aware that he actually left the meeting in personal guarantee this when we talk about pg especially after the supreme court of uh, india's judgment in lalit kumar jain we realize how important it is that the your product your company should not go away at a throwaway price or at a price which is not genuinely right because rest of it is falling on our shoulders as a person guarantor number 2 is that when we used to sign previously as a person guarantor we just used to sign like anything like this you know because there were there were so many papers and we knew that we have to sign it without which we will not get the disbursement of funds i request my panelists esteemed panelists to please discuss that that it is actually said as a continuing guarantee in all the documents that they sign so what about the limitation law how is it that you trigger the limitation law and from what given point in time that you actually trigger it whether the bank has to actually invoke the personal guarantee to actually run the limitation period from that particular date or because of the continuum of the guarantee by words of continuing guarantee it will keep on continuing whether we invoke it not invoke it etc and as we move forward we will talk about it and the third aspect maybe i'll request uh, my esteemed panelists to talk about it is that uh, when a when a personal guarantor dies will that liability rest on the survivors in the matter so as a hindu succession act we understand that it will fall on the shoulders of the survivor but as a personal guarantee law will that prevail or not is what we were keen to understand so with uh, with my opening remarks it's though not an opening remarks uh, it is just to set uh, the ball in motion i now request the esteemed panelists to start the deliberations post which we will also have question and answer session so uh, maybe request manoj ji you would like to begin mm-hmm. and then mm-hmm. as a lawyer who actually would like to dissect everything that you have said and everything that he would like to say we will request nipun ji to come forward there yes manoj ji please unmute yourself manoj ji manoj ji unmute unmute yourself. sorry my apology i could have uh, and then uh, uh, taken care of it uh, uh, thank you mamta ji uh, you know jab main aapko sun raha tha abhi baith ke to mere ko ye lag raha tha ki uh, vinder sir uh, nclt ki chair pe baithe honge aur dr mamta ji as an advocate is you know the, 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 the pleading and at the same time we as an ip jaise generally hota hai hum court ke andar khade hote hain we are learning and uh, you know uh, understanding and uh, you know uh, the, uh, teaching also तो एब्सोल्युटली ओके अब देखिए जो पर्सनल कंट्रेक्ट की जो हमारी पूरी सब्सटेंशियल बात है ये ललित कुमार जैन से स्टार्ट हुआ फिर महेंद्र कुमार जजोडिया जी के केस के अंदर एंड अल्टीमेटली गुरमीत सोधी जी के केस में अगर हम गुरमीत सोधी का जी का केस अभी जजमेंट में जब मेरी डिलीवरेशन पीपीटी आएगी तो मैं डिटेल में करूंगा तो इट हैज बेसिकली यू नो ब्रॉट एवरीथिंग बैक टू द स्केयर वन जो कि ललित कुमार जी के यहाँ से स्टार्ट हुआ था अब रही बात अभी आपने क्या कहते हैं सर ने एक बड़ी अच्छी बात करी कि जो सेक्शन 196 डी ओ टू फोर्टी के अंदर आईबीबीआई के पास को एक पावर दी गई है वेदर दैट पर्टिकुलर पावर इज बीइंग यूज्ड प्रॉपरली और मेनी अटेम्प्ट इट इज बीइंग सीडेड टू द कोड आल्सो फॉर विच जुडिशरी एंड वी ऑल्सो है ये आईबीबीआई के बारे में जो आज की डेट में ये ये इन चीजों में ही पावर सीड नहीं कर रहे यू नो वी 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 आर रियली हम लोग इस चीज के बहुत जबरदस्त भोग रहे हैं इस बात को कि डिसिप्लिनरी प्रोसीडिंग्स के अंदर भी आईबीबीआई जो है आज की डेट में यानी कि जो इम्प्लीमेंटेशन है जो एक हमारे प्रोसीजर फॉल्ट है उनके ऊपर काफी हार्ड स्टांस ले रही है और जो हम आई का ग्रुप है जो हम आई काम कर रहे हैं तो एक बहुत बड़ा एक डीमोटिंग फैक्टर भी हमारे लिए आ रहा है रीजन फॉर डेट इज कि इफ यू सी द एवरेज एज ऑफ एन आई पी इज अराउंड फिफ्टी ईयर्स ऑफ एज ही हैज ऑलरेडी लिव्ड हिज गुड लाइफ ही इज अम्बर ऑफ इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ चार्टर्ड अकाउंटेंट ही इज अम्बर ऑफ सी एम एंड ऑल दिस थिंग वट आई मीन टू से दैट ही इज अ रिस्पेक्टेबल एंड डिप्यूटेड पर्सन ही विल नॉट डू एनीथिंग विच इज बैड और विच इज इंटेंशनली ही विल कमिट समय समथिंग लाइक दैट बट आई बी सी इज अ ड्यू लॉ इट हैज लॉड ऑफ प्रोसीजर्स 
और हर बारी अब मैं डिस्कशन पेपर्स की बात करता हूँ पिछले पंद्रह दिन के अंदर दस डिस्कशन पेपर्स अभी वे की तरफ से आ रहे हैं और इतने फ्रीक्वेंट चेंजेस हैं इन सब चीजों के अंदर कि उन चीजों को जब हमारे एनसीएलटी की जजमेंट्स है एनसीएलटी के अंदर रिवर्स हो जाती है उसके बाद सुप्रीम कोर्ट मेनी अटेम्प्ट टेक्स डिफरेंस डिफरेंट सॉर्ट ऑफ फ्रांस देर वॉट आई मीन इज दैट कि जब लॉ एक इवॉल्व हो रहा होता हार्डली इनको इस लॉ को पांच साल ही होते तो वेन वी एज एन आई पी इसके ऊपर काम करते हैं तो वी सब लीनियसी वी डिजर्व टू कमिट एनी मिस्टेक आई आई टेल यू मोस्ट ऑफ दिटेक्स कमिटेड बाई एस आर अन इंटेंशनल इट इज एब्सोलूटली यू नो इंटरप्रेशन ऑफ लॉ इन दन ऑफ दर वे हम एक इंटरप्रेशन करते हैं और आई वी दूसरी तरफ से करता है लेकिन एट द एंड ऑफ द डे इफ वी यू नो इन दिजडम ऑफ आई बी बी आई वी आर बिग फॉल्टर हमारा लाइसेंस तीन महीने के लिए छह महीने के लिए या एक साल के लिए कैंसिल कर दिया जाता है एंड अब यानी यू कैन अंडरस्टैंड आप भी चार्टर्ड अकाउंटेंट हैं और बट फॉर यू एस सी एज नॉट नॉट अ वेरी बिग डिग्री बट वी पीपल हुआ सी एस सी एम एस एस दिस इज अ वेरी बिग डिग्री अलॉन्ग विद आई पी डिग्री तो एक जो हमारे इसके ऊपर इस तरह का सस्पेंशन का दाग लग जाता है तो इट 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 रियली पिंचेज इट नॉट ओनली पिंचेज टू दैट पर्टिकुलर पर्सन बट इट पिंचेज टू द होल कम्युनिटी अब अगर हम ऑन दी एवरेज देखें वर्किंग के हिसाब से अगर हम यहाँ पे चार पांच सौ आई पी एस काम कर रहे हैं तो जो डिसिप्लिनरी केसेस हैं अप्रोक्सीमेटली टेन टू ट्वेंटी परसेंट है तो आई थिंक आई एम सीडिंग माई टाइम फॉर दिस पर्पज तो दिस इज वॉट आई मीन टू से नाउ आई स्टार्ट विद माई प्रेजेंटेशन जो इस पर्टिकुलर वेबिनार के लिए बनाई गई है तो प्लीज अलाउ मी टू शेयर माई पीपीटी प्लीज अलाउ मी टू शेयर माई पीपीटी दीपुन जी जब तक पीपीटी शेयर अलाउड होती है आप प्लीज थोड़ा सा कुछ ज्ञान दीजिए हमारे को सर ने जो कहा उस बात को आगे एक्सटेंड करते हुए थैंक यू मनोज जी और थैंक यू प्रवीण जी एंड थैंक यू ऑनरेबल गुप्ता सर फॉर एक्सेप्टिंग आवर इनविटेशन एट सच अ शॉर्ट नोटिस इट इज ऑलवेज गुड टू हियर गुप्ता सर एंड ही इज सो अपडेटेड एंड ही इज इन ट्रू सेंस अ टेक्निकल मेंबर एंड थैंक यू ममता जी फॉर सेटिंग द बॉल इन मोशन दो मेरे पास बहुत ही कुछ ऑब्जर्वेशंस है जो हमने पहले भी डिस्कस की थी एक और वेबिनार में आनंद जी यही जीपा में सो वन ऑफ द इश्यूज विच आई थिंक मैम ने भी बोला है जैसे महेंद्र जजोदिया का जजमेंट है वट आई थिंक एंड इट इज अगेन माई पर्सनल ओपिनियन कि सुप्रीम कोर्ट ने उसको डिटेल में नहीं बोला है एंड देव सेड कि इरेस्पेक्टिव ऑफ कॉपरेटर इज एडमिटेड और नॉट एडमिटेड फॉर पर्सनल गारंटर द अप्रोप्रिएट फोरम वुड बी एन सी एल टी सो ये मुझे लगता है कहीं ना कहीं इट्स अ डाइवर्स ओपिनियन बिकॉज मोस्ट ऑफ द डी आर टी ऑफिसर्स डी आर टी जजेस एवरीबडी वॉज ट्रेन मेनी ऑफ द पिटिशन अक्रॉस इंडिया हैव बीन फाइल विद डी आर टी सो अगेन दिस इज आई थिंक विल अगेन गो बैक टू सुप्रीम कोर्ट एंड इन सम मैटर इट विल बी अ डिटेल जजमेंट वेदर पर्सनल गारंटर इफ द कंपनी इज नॉट एडमिटेड क्वा दैट पर्टिकुलर डेप्ट एंड कंपनी that guarantors admission should take place in nclt or drt so that is one of the mooting points which i request all other panelists to also throw some light and also uh, request gupta ji to give, give some light on this particular issue secondly another issue which i think sabhi ips or sabhi professionals ke samne aata hai that is with regard to personal guarantors jo bolte hai sir hamare check pade hain check bouncing cases hain what would happen to the check bouncing cases if personal insolvency is triggered so again my view or my interpretation is if we read the uh, moratorium or interim moratorium they say all the th uh, uh, proceedings with respect to debt so if we say any legal action or proceeding with respect to debt in my understanding 138 cases will also be included though 138 cases mein it's a quasi criminal case it has a civil impact as well as a criminal impact but i think so ki ultimately debt will get crystallized into money so probably going forward this will also help the personal guarantors to start their business again so personal insolvency route would be advisable to somebody who is facing too many check bouncing cases with regard to financial institutions so that is that is my uh, second ob i would say observation and i again i request all the panelists to throw some light on this anand ji agar aapka co host ho gaya hai to you uh, like mera co host ho gaya hai yeah, you know, uh, 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 you know uh, i would like to start my ppt 
और ये मेरी पीटी पी पी पीटी थोड़ी सी बिफोर आई स्टार्टिंग इट आई मस्ट कन्फ्यूज यू डेट Yeah, this PPT I must confess you has been prepared by me and Mamta ji jointly. So, पहले हमने सोचा था कि कुछ slides Mamta ji करने के कुछ मैं कर लूँगा, but when you know she was meeting chairman, तो उन्होंने कहा आप ही slides कर लीजिए. One of the webinar is the practical aspect of recent developments of the law of personal guarantors to corporate data. You know, you know, it's 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 briefly. If you go with the history of insolvency. हिस्ट्री ऑफ इंसॉल्वेंसी जब मैंने थोड़ा सा इसको पढ़ने की कोशिश करी तो इसमें ये पता चला कि हिस्ट्री ऑफ दिवालिया वर्ड इन इंडिया इन एशियन इंडिया इफ ए पर्सन इज नॉट एबल टू पे डेट देन ड्यूरिंग डे टाइम ही विल लिट दिया इन हिज शॉप एंड देन द होल मार्केट डोज दैट ही हैज बिकम दिवालिया बट दिस पर्सन वॉज हैविंग नो लीगल सेंटिटी जस्ट टू गिव लीगल सेंटिटी जो हमारा पर्सनल इंसॉल्वेंसी का प्रोसेस था प्रेसिडेंट इंसॉल्वेंसी एक्ट वन नाइन जीरो नाइन और प्रोविडेंशियल इंसॉल्वेंसी एक्ट वन नाइन टू जीरो केम इन टू पिक्चर नो यू नो दिस एक्ट स्टिल प्रोविडिंग बट द टॉपिक ऑफ द टू डेज आई बी सी नो पार्ट थ्री ऑफ आई बी सी टू थाउजेंड सिक्सटीन मेड एप्लीकेबल विद इफेक्ट फ्रॉम डिसंबर टू थाउजेंड एंड नाइनटीन It discharges person into of uh, all its past liabilities if he can first start his life after bearing pain for around one year. Theoretically, one year, but practically, if we do one eighty days insolvency process, the initial start, do it, but after bankruptcy, do it, so it runs into two or three years. you know section 2 of this uh, particular uh, ibc code says that this code shall apply to by introduction of uh, sub uh, subsection e personal guarantor to corporate debtors it it still has to be applied that it has not been uh, you know uh, the uh, made uh, notified for partnership firms that are partnership firm so at present jo hai ye act jo hai sirf pg to c d ke liye hi applicable hai these are all the sections and the relevant uh, uh, sections which we need to uh, study if we want to practice in personal guarantee aur isme ek aur achhi baat hai ki 18 3 2020 se pehle hi hamara ibc act jnk pe applicable nahi tha no this act is applicable there meaning thereby that uh, uh, all pg cases can also be done for jnk residents also These are the you know big cases. Okay, uh, no no no. Let's come out with this thing. Section ninety four application. Section ninety four application. जो इसके अंदर दो तरह के application जाती हैं. एक section ninety four application और एक section ninety five application. Section ninety four application जाती है personal guarantor के through, whereby he applies to the adjudicating authority for initiation of personal uh, the, you know IBC proceedings against it. तो ये जो section ninety four की application जा रही है, ये किन circumstances में जाती है? Why I'm sharing this thing with my all audience is that. See, when we act as a consultant to the uh, the personal guarantor of uh, corporate debtor, so many a time it is beneficial for them also to put the application. So, when they put section ninety four application, so what kind of circumstances do they go through, or what kind of feature are they? Today I am sharing with you. It has seen practically that uh, you know uh, uh, in case of uh, corporate debtor where they have given a guarantee and some sort of surpassing proceedings, uh, financial creditor or mainly bank has started against them. So he, uh, you know, we have seen it that just to plan his affair, just to you know postpone it or get rid of that particular surpassing proceedings, whereby, uh, as we uh, we know, everybody we know, he, जो भी इसने property mortgage करी होती है bank को as a personal contract उधर चीरी, वो bank जो है option के लिए लगा देता है. So he can file section ninety four application, whereby because section the moment you file the application, आपका एक partial moratorium start हो जाता है, as a result of which जो आपकी कोई भी लीगल प्रोसीडिंग्स होती हैं वो स्टॉक हो जाती हैं सिमिलरली हमने देखा है कि जब भी कोई सरपाची की गेस्ट बैंक थोड़ा सा ऑप्शन का नोटिस निकालने लगता है या कुछ और करने लगता है तो पर्सनल गंटर टू कॉपोरेट डेटर गोज फॉर फाइलिंग सेक्शन 94 एप्लीकेशन 
सेकेंड सिचुएशन हम लोगों ने ये देखी है कि जो प्रैक्टिकल केसेस हम लोगों ने करे हैं मेनी आर टाइम्स काफी ह्यूज टैक्स लाइबिलिटी आ जाती है मे बी ड्यू टू द सर्च और जीएसटी में देखा गया था कि मेनी अटैम कुछ लोग बिलिंग विलिंग का इलीगल या उल्टा सदा काम कर लेते हैं विश दे फील दे वोट बी एबल टू गेट रिलीफ अंडर डेट पर्टिकुलर एक्ट मे बी अंडर इनकम टैक्स एक्ट और मे बी अंडर जीएसटी और वैट और सर्विस एक्ट तो इन डैट केस ऑल्सो दे फाइल सेक्शन नाइनटी फोर एप्लीकेशन टू प्लान देयर अफेयर्स जब कोरोना वगैरह आया इस तरह का एपेडिक में आया तो कुछ इंडस्ट्रीज जो हैवीली बॉर्डर फ्रंट के ऊपर थी लाइक होटल इंडस्ट्रीज एयरलाइंस इंडस्ट्रीज इनका देखा गया कि इनकी यू नो दैट डिफॉल्टेड इन पेमेंट एंड लाइक दैट तो इनके जो ऑनर्स थे इन्होंने भी इनका जो इधर सीडी का बिजनेस जब फेल हुआ तो इनके ऑनर्स ने भी हमने देखा कि प्रैक्टिकली नाइनटी की एप्लीकेशन फाइल कर दी एक एस्पेक्ट और देखा गया है कि ये नो देखिए कि अगर किसी कॉर्पोरेट डेट पर्सनल कंट्रोल ऑफ कॉर्पोरेट को पता चलता है कि बैंक सेक्शन 95 की एप्लीकेशन फाइल करने जा रहा है तो वो ही प्लान इज फेयर कि बिफोर बैंक यू नो पुट्स हिज एप्लीकेशन ही पुट्स हिज एप्लीकेशन अंडर सेक्शन 94 इसके अंदर सबसे बड़ा बेनिफिट उसको ये मिलता है बिकॉज सेक्शन 94 के अंदर हो या सेक्शन 95 के अंदर हो यू कैन प्रपोज द नेम ऑफ द आरपी एवरीबॉडी वांट्स कि इंस्टेड ऑफ यू नो डीलिंग विद बैंक्स आरपी ऑल द आरपी इज एन इंडिपेंडेंट पर्सन लेट मी डील विद पर्सन अपॉइंटेड बाय मी तो इस केसेस में भी देखा है कि यू नो दे एक्सीड बैंक्स एंड स्टार्ट फाइलिंग दिस थिंग अब सेक्शन 95 की एप्लीकेशन है ये जाती है जनरली नॉट जनरली ये फाइनेंशियल क्रेडिटर फाइल करता है तो प्रैक्टिकली हमने ये देखा कि सेक्शन 95 की एप्लीकेशन इन दीज सर्कमस्टांसेस बैंक आर फाइलिंग क्रिप के अंदर ऑलरेडी uh, uh, उनके केसेस चल रहे हैं या चलने वाले हैं बट दे नो कि जो इनके ऑनर्स हैं जो जो पर्सनल कंटर दे आर मोर वेल्थी तो जो एंड क्रिप के अंदर इनका अकाउंट सीडी uh, uh, का जो क्रिप सॉरी सीडी का जो अकाउंट था वो एनपीए हो गया या एनपीए होने वाला है तो उनको लगता है कि uh, हम अगर uh, 95 की एप्लीकेशन अगेंस्ट पर्सनल कंटर डाल देंगे तो इट विल पुट लॉट ऑफ प्रेशर ऑन देम और दैट इज वाई यू नो बैंक मेनी अटैम्प टेक डिस डूइंग दिस थिंग सेकेंड इज डैट की मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ ने सब बैंक को इंस्ट्रक्शन दी है including pnb also sbi also and other banks also he you know they were government has been criticized a lot where were they were being said ki chaliye corporate debtors ko to apne ibc ke andar dal diya lekin inke jo real owners hain jo jo real bande hain jo directors ya personal grantors hain they are living king size life unki life ke upar koi farak nahi pada and uh, just uh, to uh, tighten the bar ministry has given a section to all the banks all public sector banks कि जिस इसके अगेंस्ट क्रिप्ट की केसेस हुए हैं और जहां पे इन मोस्ट ऑफ केसेस डायरेक्टर्स की पर्सनल गारंटी ली जाती है वी शुड यू नो ट्राई टू रिकवर बैलेंस अमाउंट फ्रॉम देम आल्सो जैसा सर ने कहा कि रजिस्ट्रेशन प्लान एक बार ये अप्रूव हो जाए उसके बाद उनसे पैसे रिकवर नहीं किए जा सकते एज पर ऑनरेबल सुप्रीम कोर्ट जजमेंट बट अगर रजिस्ट्रेशन प्लान अप्रूव ही नहीं हुआ जब क्रिप प्रोसेस इज गोइंग ऑन एंड डैट केस मनी कैन बी रिकवर फ्रॉम देम लैंडमार्क uh, जजमेंट में अगर हम देखें तो ललित कुमार जैन जी की सबसे बड़ी जजमेंट थी जिसके अंदर uh, ये चैलेंज किया गया था कि जो आई बी बैड एंड नोटिफिकेशन इशू कर रहा है अगेंस्ट पर्सनल गंटर्स दिसंबर के दो हजार उन्नीस के में दैट वॉज चैलेंज बट ऑनरेबल सुप्रीम कोर्ट हेल्ड अदरवाइज ये दिस जजमेंट हैज बिकम लिटल बट ओल्ड नो आई एम नॉट इट नॉट टेकिंग डिस्कसिंग मच ऑन इट सर ने भी अभी बताया गुरबीर सोदी वर्सेज यूनियन ऑफ इंडिया ये एक बहुत अच्छी जजमेंट है <coughs> यानी कि ये जजमेंट फ्रॉम पर्सनल कंट्रोल एंगल से हम देखा थे तो इस पर्टिकुलर जजमेंट के अंदर ऑनरेबल सुप्रीम कोर्ट ने हार्डली ये एक कदम यहां पहले आई है तो uh, इस पर्टिकुलर जजमेंट के अंदर यू नो अटली दर्टिकुलर एस्पेक्ट वर्ड यू कैन डू ये क्यों आया इसको मैं बात बताता हूँ अगर हमारा कुछ हमारे कोई हमारे कंसल्टेंसी लेने के लिए आता है यानी सम सॉर्ट ऑफ सेक्शन 95 फाइव प्रोसीडिंग स्टार्टेड अगेंस्ट हिम ही कैन मूव टू द गुलबी सोदी केस जजमेंट एंड सॉरी ही कैन टैग हिज केस अलोंग विद दिस पर्टिकुलर जजमेंट एंड प्रे टू द सुप्रीम कोर्ट फॉर द स्टे ऑफ द प्रोसीडिंग अगेंस्ट हिम बिकॉज इन दिस केस वॉट हैज हैपन दैट ऑनरेबल सुप्रीम कोर्ट हैज स्टेट द प्रोसीडिंग ऑफ पर्सनल कंटर 
uh, what are the essential feature of staying this thing i just uh, shared with you sir ne bhi thoda sa bataya to main thoda sa detail mein aapko share kar leta hu it said that monitoring starts on filing his data without providing an opportunity to him so it is the violation of uh, the you know article 32 of constitution ki ek bande ke against aap koi proceeding start kar dete ho aur usse puchte nahi ho और लेकिन ऑनरेबल सुप्रीम कोर्ट ने इस पर्टिकुलर केस के अंदर गुडबी सोदी के केस के अंदर यह कहा है कि जो पर्सनल कंट्रोल है ही विल नॉट एलिनिएट और इनकम्बर और डिस्पोज ऑफ एनी ऑफ एसेट्स एनी ऑफ हिस्स एसेट्स एंड बेस्ड ऑन दीज यू नो थ्री मेन फीचर्स ऑनरेबल सुप्रीम कोर्ट हैज ग्रांटेड स्टे ऑन द सेक्शन नाइन्टी फाइव एप्लीकेशन तो इसको मैंने थोड़ा सा डिटेल में इस करके शेयर करा है कि इफ एनी ऑफ एनी ऑफ आर associate of clients is requiring a stay on the section 95 application so he can tag his case along with it jaisa ki aapko yaad hoga lalit kumar jain ke case pe shuru mein hua tha manochi in this may you like to just tell the people that whether if they have been given an opportunity of being heard then probably this case will help them uh, uh, mamta ji is case mein opportunity milti nahi hai रीजन फॉर डेट इज कि आप जब इनिशियल एप्लीकेशन फाइल करते हो फॉर्म ई के अंदर तो उस समय आप यानी कि यू सिंपली फाइल द एप्लीकेशन और जो इंटरन मोरिटोरियम है जैसे ही आपकी वो रजिस्टर के यहाँ पे रिसीव करती है वो स्टार्ट हो जाता है तो इसमें तो अपॉर्चुनिटी और इसी यानी यानी कि बेसिकली मैं एक दूसरे एस्पेक्ट है जैसे मैंने आपको पहले बताया बताना चाहता हूँ कि हैव सीन इन मेनी टाइम कि जब सरफासी के अंदर वो ऑप्शन का नोटिस निकाल देते हैं पर्सनल ग्रंटर की प्रॉपर्टी का तो पर्सनल ग्रंटर इमीडिएटली ये एप्लीकेशन फाइल करके बैंकर को बता देता कि मैं भैया सेक्शन 94 की मैंने एप्लीकेशन फाइल कर दी है तो ऑल द केसेस विल बी स्टेट तो इसी बेस को लेते हुए सब ऑनरेबल सुप्रीम कोर्ट ने कहा कि इट वॉयलाइट द यू नो फंडामेंटल राइट एज गॉन्टेड टू द सिटीजन ऑफ इंडिया अंडर आर्टिकल थर्टी तो हम uh, इसको स्टे uh, करते हैं मनोज जी इसमें मतलब सीआरपी एडमिशन नहीं होता है एडमिशन का नहीं है फाइलिंग पे ही मतलब ये स्टार्ट हो जाता है पीरियड एब्सोल्युटली यू हैव लाइक जो आगे डिस्कस करूंगा दोनों में क्या फर्क है तो एक इंटरनल मोरिटोरियम होता है फुल मोरिटोरियम होता है तो ये इंटरनल मोरिटोरियम होता है ये स्टार्ट हो जाता है और इसका सबसे बड़ा बेनिफिट ये है सिंपली ऑन फाइलिंग जैसे रजिस्टर आपको केस आपका बेंच में लगे या ना लगे जैसे रजिस्टर आपको आप ऑनलाइन फाइलिंग करते हो ना आई थिंक दो हजार फीस है इसकी फीस पे करके और जैसे रजिस्टर अपनी और सीध आपको कंप्यूटर जनरेटेड कार्ड के देता उसी टाइम से मोरिटोरियम स्टार्ट हो जाता है और आपको हर जो भी आपके अगेंस्ट केसेज है जो भी आपके अगेंस्ट रिकवरी प्रोसीडिंग है उनके अगेंस्ट ऑटोमेटिकली आपको स्टे मिल जाता है मनोज जी वी हैव द एस्टीम प्रेजेंस ऑफ श्री गुप्ता जी सर यस यस सर प्लीज एनलाइटन अस प्लीज एनलाइटन अस नहीं नहीं ऑन द दिस इज द इंटरिम मोरिटोरियम इज एप्लीकेबल सिंस द मोमेंट एप्लीकेशन इज फाइल्ड एंड गिवन इन नंबर इज नंबर्ड इन दैट सेंस एज अगेंस्ट द सेक्शन 14 इन द केस ऑफ नॉर्मल सीआईआरपी and uh, a final moratorium will come after the statutory report and recommendation of the rp is uh, accepted by the adjudicating authority yes sir is, yes sir there is no and in both the stages the situation is whether the opportunity of being heard is to be given to the affected party or not that is the question that was the question some enclek in some cases earlier had a, some ncrt benches had a view that limited opportunities to be given like section 7 as held by the honorable supreme court in the case of swiss stevens on the same analogy now it has been expanded in the case of gurmeet sodhi See, the opportunity of hearing in terms of uh, section 424 of companies act also where the uh, principles of natural justice are binding on the adjudicating authority being nclt so these are the situations where we have to take into consideration and moratorium will certainly come into place the moment Uh, application is filed sir i would like to add one one more writ petition which is now filed in gujarat high court in that case uh, it was a section 95 moved through rp through rp normally nor through rp all the financial creditors are move, moving through rp only so in that uh, in that the point of principle of natural justice they have said that since rp has filed an application and in normal course the view is courts ask the rp to give a report since he has already filed the application he has already formed a view 
so ultimately it's a violation of natural justice in a way that the person who was going to ju judge whether this case has to be admitted or not he himself has done it yes and that is clear but that is correct but uh, there is a, there are exceptions to the uh, uh, this uh, uh, system of uh, applicability of principles of natural justice generally principles of natural justice are not applicable when there is a bias Negative. but if some bias is created by a statute itself so that bias can uh, that will not be a, considered as a violation of principles of natural justice in that sense that i think why, that also is now going to supreme court yes Here, that, then if, court if you recall yes, uh, i think all the professionals must have gone through the recent order with the ella bench which i was uh, the author of that in the rati graphics uh, which has been uh, pronounced on 13 june 2022 itself we have taken a view of whether the principles of natural justice are applicable to ibc proceedings or not and we have formed a view we have held a view, held that the principles of natural justice in all its dimensions subject to statutory exceptions which are already there because there is a statutory exception of coc which is there is a apparent conflict of interest and there is a bias for them and their actions are non justiciable so they are supposed to act more in more in following the principles of natural justice and in that case we have also held that the principles of natural justice will be considered as a law having force law having force for the purposes of section 30 bracket may 2 bracket may clause e so that any arbitrary and capricious exercise by the coc shall certainly can be set aside examined and any decision which has caused prejudice to any person who is uh, having a substantial cause of action and locus shall have to be uh, re revisited that is the uh, which we were in the facts of the case we also held that so now this issue is becoming even if you see that the discussion paper which was floated by ibbi in august 2021 it dealt with the same issue the conduct and arbitrariness of the coc or uh, to be very frank in except in swiss rivens case where certain provisions were challenged uh, on the basis of constitutional validity we have not seen in fact any challenge as a whole to the uh, uh, constitutionality of ibc 2016 which violates principles of natural justice uh, in all its ramifications in a flagrant manner because you don't give opportunity limited opportunity and uh, if proceedings in rem not in personam recent and judicial uh, view is also the same if you see there is a, another just uh, decision of the supreme court has come where they where they have said section 60 sub section 6 of ibc the moratorium will be applicable for the purpose of extension of limitation to the corporate debtor under the new management whereas in the sr steel case the supreme court has said the all claims stand is extinguished and section 60 sub section 6 benefit will not be applicable after the resolution to any claimant or the creditors so there is dichotomy between the approach of the supreme court itself once uh, they once uh, you give a right to the corporate debtor under the new management to recover its dues having the benefit of extended limitation period by resorting to section 60 sub section 6 of ibc the same benefit you deny to an operational creditor or financial creditor who has so there has to be something uh, looked into statutorily and as well as judicial approach is also required to be remodif uh, remodeled so on the basis of arbitrariness or capricious exercise or violation of principles of natural justice we have to see it has to test the time by the at the highest forum of this country judicial forum at the honorable supreme court and in fact in you say there is a decision of bilal rck rcpk dated 3 june 2022 by honorable supreme court while deciding section 12a issue they have extended the same principle which was uh, uh, evolved in the case of swiss rivens where the power was given to nclt and nclet that they can set aside any decision which is an instance of arbitrary capricious or malafide exercise by uh, coc and uh, we have also had in that view to the for the benefit of ips and other professionals 
that whether any ip acting as a irp or rp or liquidator they are public authorities discharging public functions so they are bound to follow the principles of natural justice in toto except whatever exceptions two exceptions are there coc has become so this is the this is the hot issue which is being deliberated everywhere government is to look into it whether the person who is going to be affected deserves a right of hearing or not at all that is the situation right now थैंक यू वेरी मच सर आपने बहुत अच्छी तरह से लाइटन करा बहुत ही अच्छी तरह से लाइटन करा यानी कि ममता जी प्लीज से समथिंग यू वांट टू से समथिंग प्लीज कैरी ऑन थैंक यू थैंक यू वीरेंद्र जी थैंक यू वेरी मच देखिए अब सर ने जो बात कही इसको मैं समराइज इस तरह से कर देता हूं विद रेफरेंस टू गुरमोह सोदीस केस इसके जैसे कि मैंने पहले शेयर करा कि जैसे ही हम लोग एप्लीकेशन फाइल करते हैं तो इंटरम मोरटोरियम स्टार्ट हो जाता है तो इंटरम जब इस केस के अंदर जो आर्गुमेंट दिए गए थे एडवोकेट से वो ये दिए गए थे कि जैसे ही हमारे यानी कि क्लाइंट ये एप्लीकेशन फाइल करेगी उसकी रेपुटेशन डाउन हो गई ही बिकेम इन फाइनेंशियल स्टेट बिकॉज लोगों ने कहा कि इससे आईबीसी प्रोसीडिंग स्टार्ट हो गई है दिस इज दिस इज ऑल दिस थिंग और ये जो ये ये जो यानी कि जो सिस्टम स्टार्ट हुआ ये बगैर उसको हेयर किए हुआ बिकॉज एप्लीकेशन तो आरपी साइन करके करे जाना करे 94 के अंदर डिस्कशन है एप्लीकेंट की तो अगर उसके थ्रू करी गई तो एकदम जब ये स्टार्ट हो गया तो इट यू नो पहले हम लोगों ने बेनिफिट काउंट करे कि 94 के एप्लीकेशन में क्या बेनिफिट है इस केस में एडवोकेट्स ने यह कहा कि इसके एप्लीकेशन फाइल करने से क्या नुकसान हो रहे हैं हमारे क्लाइंट को तो एज ए रिजल्ट ऑफ इट दिस एप्लीकेशन जो है जो कि मेरे क्लाइंट के अगेंस्ट फाइल करेगी विदाउट हेयरिंग में इट शुड बी स्टॉप and uh, the, because it violates uh, article 32 and honorable supreme court agreed with the, the condition of the concerned advocate and uh, they granted stay against the proceeding under section 90 and uh, uh, so, um, uh, yeah, <coughs> एडवोकेट सर ने भी ये कहा कि वो गुजरात हाई कोर्ट के अंदर भी रिपोर्ट के रिलेटेड जो है सर आप बिल्कुल ठीक कह रहे हैं निपुण जी कि देखिए जब मैंने भी रिपोर्ट फाइल करी अब देखिए दो चीजें बड़ी कंफ्लिक्टिंग आ रही हैं एक मैंने यानी कि आप ही का बात को आगे एक्सटेंड करती हूँ जब मैंने एप्लीकेशन साइन करी मेरे को किसी ने अपॉइंट करा प्रपोज करा आरपी तो जाए सेक्शन 94 की एप्लीकेशन हो जाए 95 की एप्लीकेशन हो जब मेरे को उन्होंने आरपी प्रपोज करा तो मैंने वो एप्लीकेशन साइन करी अब मैंने एक चीज को आइडेंटिफाई कर दिया जब एप्लीकेशन साइन करा अब उसके बाद मैं उसकी रिपोर्ट क्या दूंगा बाद में सेक्शन नाइनटी के अंदर यू नो सॉरी सेक्शन नाइनटी के अंदर तो दिस इज कंफ्लिक्टिंग देयर बट ओनली थिंग इज वी से डेट लॉ इज इवॉल्विंग नया नया लॉ है तो धीरे धीरे इसके अंदर कुछ ना कुछ चेंजेस आ के जो भी ये आगे भी बहुत सारे इश्यूज हैं जैसे सीओसी की सर बात कर रहे थे अब सीओसी की कमर्शियल विजडम को सुप्रीम कोर्ट ने ऐसे लिया है कि जैसे जुडिशरी कुछ आई नहीं यानी कि वो जो काम करती है वो दैट इज दैट जुडिशरी कांट इंटरफेयर तो ऑनरेबल सुप्रीम कोर्ट का यू नो इट्स इन देयर विजडम दे हैव टेकन दिस इवॉल्व्ड लॉ इन दिस वे तो दिस इज देयर दिस इज ऑल देयर नहीं यू आई फॉर द बेनिफिट ऑफ ऑल द यूजर्स please read para 153 of that order last page of our order uh, that addresses so many issues in on on the broader policy front and in that uh, the functioning of coc has been duly highlighted and it is to protect the ips because uh, neutrality and independence of the ips is compromised what be theoretically we may say anything but the professional interests have to be taken care of also Uh, you see uh, section regulation 35 sub, uh, sub regulation yes, we were uh, of the cirp regulations which is which is under chapter 10 of the cirp regulations under the head of resolution plan so and as per that if you go we go by the that regulation the fair value and liquidation value should be known to the coc only when the resolutions resolution plans are received this is the scheme but whether in reality it happens that is a question so the position of rp has been very very strong uh, though it may be termed as a facilitator or administrator it's not that the statute has given enough powers but the pressure of coc functioning and their adoquism as uh, mr manoj has already pointed out the the commercial wisdom has been made non justiciable for and in the garb of that they try to become and assert every function according to whims and fancies of their own members they try to function 
that is the real problem creating is created and coming from that end uh, my my do apology to mr bukal sahib because he is from the coc side so but sir ye ek the mutual discussion hai so i hope you will take it in good spirit so then thank you very like much sir like to be enlightened because they say it is it is the way it is since npas and other issues are uh affect uh, are affecting the this uh, country as a whole and they are also they are suffering uh, so we have to take we are not saying personally but what is happening as a adjudicating authority what we observed during the course of the, uh, our adjudication processes this was the feeling that is we expressed in our order through we can't speak now we are i'm not a member so now i am a free bird i can express my view on the public forum but otherwise as a member we only we can speak through our judicial orders so that was the attempt with all good intentions to explain that yes, his principles of natural justice uh, Mr. made Sahai, like to i think uh, yeah sir isme if if my my uh, please permit me can i uh, ask for one question please Manu yes please sir सर हमारा देखिए अगर हम आईबीसी में एक सिंगल रीजन लेना यानी कि आईबीसी का जितनी इफेक्टिव वैसे ये हो सकता था हो नहीं रहा उसका सबसे बड़ा रीजन सर ये है माय ड्यू पॉलिसी फॉर डैट आई एम यूजिंग माय वर्ड ड्यू पॉलिसी फॉर डैट अगेन एंड अगेन जुडिशरी की तरफ से जो जजमेंट्स की डिले होती है सर आपके लिए yes. सरकार ने उस पर कोर्ट ने कह दिया कि सारी की सारी टाइमलाइन डायरेक्टली नेचर है हमारे लिए सर कह दिया मैंडेटरी नेचर तो सर जरा प्लीज इस पर भी हमारे दिल थोड़ा सा बढ़ाइए और थोड़ा सा हमारे को आई फुली एग्री विद यू और एंडोर्स विद एंडोर्स योर ऑब्जर्वेशंस बिकॉज़ देयर इज अ सेक्शन 64 ऑफ आईबीसी व्हिच सेज द एक्सपेडिशनल डिस्पोजल ऑफ केसेस एंड यू यू मे नोट नोट डाउन section 64 says there there for that subsection to expedition expedition within the certain time of hearing we have to dispose of the cases but uh, you have to see from two perspectives in last 3 years what has happened there was pandemic situation number one we i am not trying to explain the position but i will tell you the tell you the reality and number two members there was no regular president till to october 2021 for more than almost two years members were not appointed every member was taking uh, 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 three or two or four benches so uh, there is no regular staff even contractual now the government is trying to bring the regular staff so this is the forum which you have to take and in fact uh, as far as our bench is concerned whether be it in kolkata mamta ji is there mr nupin is there where i was member there was a question 7 to 10 working days all the decisions were pronounced from the date of hearing the, of the order we disposed of 2000 cases in amdavad 1400 1500 cases in kolkata so it's not that the members are 80 20 principle works everywhere 20% people carry 80% works 80% take 20% work even in judiciary that applies so there is a, only one thing that can be done and the role of the uh, advocates is also there they conveniently try to take adjournments on personal grounds and supreme court has also come heavily on that filing of uh, the role of the bar is very important the roger matthew case in the in the roger matthew case the supreme in but the south bank, south indian bank the supreme court has the justice honorable justice chanchur saab has clearly stated now the bar and the professional fraternity has to come up with the expectations of the society instead of making a, a case of a professional uh, enrichment at the cost of justice and delay that should also be frivolous applications are filed section 192 is a ritual the moment an ip takes a charge within a month you get a section 192 so these are the cases where we have, we have multiple factors and the i agree with you but these are all the aspects or the different uh, aspect, uh, issues taken together and another aspect is there no rules under ibc timelines you have mentioned starting from swiss revenues if you go by strictly by the principles of uh, the ibc limited opportunity within 14 days section 7 admit date and default nothing to be seen in section 9 only a one opportunity before that to before filing application notice of demand that's sufficient but in spite of that honorable supreme court held that no opportunity 
to an effect going to be an which is going to affect certain parties to be given so separate rules are required for ibc proceedings where the adjournment should not be given where there should be a direction for the members to dispose of the matters there should be a mechanism of monitoring of case management by the administration strictly who reserved the order what is the when is was drafted when it was sent to the member other member when it was signed why it was not pronounced all these actions are required at all levels we do it's not that but we have to take into consideration there must be cost for adjournments filing now the 1 crore limit the basic structure happened the 1 lakh limit it overburdened the ibc but we are not concerned uh, nclt sorry we are not concerned with the fate of the company petitions we are not even talking about that it's a very sad state of affairs the whole economic growth is suffering because of reorganization and restructuring is pending for 2 to 3 4 4 years 5 years 6 years so we have to professionals have to take you can take uh, a better standing and a better force well, forceful representation to the government executive as well as legislature to redesign the law so that the except uh, the delay is uh, altogether uh, can be a, can be uh, controlled in a larger pers- larger public interest thank you sir thank you so much thank you sir thank you. i think uh, is cheez ko main ek hi baat se conclude karunga the ibbi uh, is coming out with lot of discussion papers they should come out uh, on discussion paper uh, on this also ki you know exactly. they killing ibc and sir ne itni sari baatein batayi ki us discussion paper mein kya kya part ho sakta hai aur kaise kaise us cheez ko khatam kiya ja sakta hai thank you very much sir sir we are really really elated with your deliberation thank you very much nahi nahi we it is because in the interest of the company dekhiye there is one saying in the good of the society your best is involved in the bad of the society your worst is involved it is that relative degree so you see chain of bankruptcies are happening because of uh, nothing is given to operational data we go we can go on and find out so many things which are happening let the good sense prevail let us come back to the issue uh, uh, may i move forward now please with the kind permission of everybody please okay. please one uh, yeah a uh, next next important judgment which uh, uh, has already been discussed was with reference to mahinder kumar jodhia versus uh, sbi whereby entrad held that even in the absence of any uh, pending corporate uh, insolvency proceeding or liquidation proceeding application under section 95 can be made against a person country of the corporate debtor <coughs> by virtue of section 61 code और इसके अंदर जो टेरिटोरियल जुडिक्शन थी वो भी ये कहा गया कि जहाँ पे रजिस्टर्ड ऑफिस सीडी का है वहीं पे उसकी टेरिटोरियल जुडिक्शन जुडिक्शन आएगी सिंघी सर ने थोड़ा सा इस पे हाईलाइट करने की कोशिश करी कि डीआरटी के जजेस में वो के बारे में जो है तो सर आई फुली डोज योर व्यू और इसके लिए अगर आप कुछ और एड करना चाहें तो प्लीज एड करिए सर मेरा यही व्यू है कि शायद ये जजमेंट सुप्रीम कोर्ट ने रीजनड नहीं दिया है दे हैव जस्ट सेड दैट वी विल नॉट इंटरफेयर विद द जजमेंट ऑफ एन सी सो मुझे लगता है कि जब ये रीजन ऑर्डर होगा ये पर इनक्यूरियम है एंड व्हेन इट विल बी रीजन ऑर्डर प्रोबेबली सुप्रीम कोर्ट विल एनालाइज कि वाई इफ द मैटर इज नॉट एडमिटेड जुरिस्डिक्शन ऑफ एनसीएल डज नॉट लैंड इट शुड कंटिन्यू विद डी आर टी अदरवाइज द प्रोसीजर एंड द नोटिफिकेशन ऑफ मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ फाइनेंस गोज अवे Yes, yes, yes. In my opinion, Nipunji, when this came, I was totally opposite to. I mean, when I was being suggested with, I was giving a contrary view to what has come. Yes, yes, yes. Hey, there are two as another two aspects we have to understand what the, uh, the judiciary and the legis uh, they are thinking. If you see section five, bracket me five capital A of IBC, corporate guarantor. There was a decision even to an in, uh, corporate guarantor. to an individual or to a proprietorship firm or to a partnership is liable to be uh, concern, uh, in initiation of uh, insolvency under ibc and uh, 60 subsection 2 is very clear but 60 subsection 1 has been given a predominance so there is a question of reconciliation between the two sections my personal view is also same ki unless something is pending against you against the corporate debtor it should not that is based on equity also 
not uh, though we say equity is not applicable uh, but it is unless the there is an uh, some action against the principal borrower being a corporate entity how you can assert the jurisdiction of dirt in both ways or in the corporate person we can we corporate guarantor we can understand because the corporate guarantor is a corporate uh, person in terms of provisions of ibc in case of even in case of individuals so some uh, some re uh, rebalancing is required whether the individual is connected in either as a personal guarantor or as a principal borrower what should who should have the jurisdiction this issue has will have to be resolved one or the other day सर बिल्कुल वही बात कर रहे हैं जो निपुण जी ने कही एंड जो स्टार्टिंग में मैडम ने ममता जी ने जो बात की कि जब बेसिकली हो ये रहा है कि जब एक्ट बनाया जाता है बेस्ड ऑन सम रिपोर्ट एंड जैसे बी रिपोर्ट या पर्सनल कंटेक पर भी कमेटी बैठाई गई थी वो ऑब्जेक्टिव्स को एनालाइज करके किया जाता है बट पर बिकॉज ऑफ एनी रीजन लेटर ऑन इसकी जो इंटरप्रिटेशन आती है जुडिशी से वो शायद जो इसका ये बेसिक ऑब्जेक्टिव होता है उसको शायद थोड़ा सा ओवरलुक कर दिया जाता है जहाँ मे बी बिकॉज ऑफ एनी रीजन यू नो इट चेंज तो चलिए मैं थोड़ा सा आगे और बढ़ता हूँ just one point to be considered till it close here please, please. Uh, successor success, normally what it will depend of the terms of agreement for guarantee con contract for guarantee number 1 but there is a, uh, the the opportunity under general law will not be deprived against the successors but now, however nclt kolkata bench has taken a view in one case that the uh, as successors of personal guarantors do not fit into the definition what is of given the guarantors of the ibc and no recourse under ibc can be taken against the successors do the general uh, the, 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 uh, opportunity to avail the remedies under general provisions of law will remain there subject to the terms of the contract of guarantee now what so, i understand yes please yes mamta ji please yeah i was i was asking gupta ji gupta ji what is your view will it come to the successor or it will not sir nay hey, yeah. under ibc i am of the view it will not come okay my view is that it will not come under ibc successor ke liye and that the present statutory framework but under the other other law it can come uh, sir isme uh, what i understand is that under general law अगर आ भी गया सक्सेसर्स के पास में लेट्स सी प्रेज्यूम इट हाइपोथेटिकली तो उसकी लायबिलिटी विल बी लिमिटेड टू द एक्सटेंट ऑफ द प्रॉपर्टी व्हिच ही हैज ही इज गेटिंग एज अ सक्सेसर दैट दैट इज अनदर क्वेश्चन वेदर इज पर्सनल प्रॉपर्टी इज नॉट कनेक्टेड विद द नॉट गेटिंग नॉट रिलेटेड टू सक्सेशन वेदर दैट वुड कम और नॉट दैट इज अनदर डायमेंशन ऑफ द सिचुएशन सो एंड हाउ द मोरेटोरियम विल बी अप्लाइड टू सच सच सक्सेसर Uh, because interim moratorium comes so he cannot dispose of his personal properties also yes sir but in, i remember in taxation laws in income tax laws if any liability is of any uh, you know any any uh, any individual is devolved to the successor then it is absolutely devolved only to the extent of what he yes, gets yes. from that particular uh, succession under income tax there is another aspect if you gain uh, if you Uh, take the property or something capital gain but it is a legacy so that is not taxable as such in your hands also if something is best, you get a legacy though it may be taxable and on the uh, original ssc but uh, if you if some successor gets as a legacy as a uh, inheritance so that would not be taxable just for example capital gains uh, he somebody invest in the bonds or capital schemes so but uh, in the main time the original ssc is die ssc is dead and you get the benefit of that interest or something uh, that capital gain which you have availed exemption cannot be withdrawn because it is a legacy not a bit, uh, anything uh, uh, you are not liable to capital gain chaliye sir thank you very much thank you uh, let me move forward yes, because yes. time is also a bit constrained yeah, for time us is, yeah, time is time Uh, okay now now i'm i'm taking up some practical questions and answers and uh, uh, my first uh, question is uh, you know i thought of asking my answer to my co panelists and uh, 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 other the the the, the, person, the you know the other attendees also but since scarcity of time uh, is already 520 uh, what answer i have in my my mind i'm sharing with it 
एंड इसके अलावा अगर कोई और आंसर हमारे को पैनलिस्ट या हमारे के पास हो तो प्लीज ही कैन शेयर इट विद मी दिस दिस इज एब्सोल्युटली व्हाट आई हैव यू नो लर्न फ्रॉम माय प्रैक्टिकल एक्सपीरियंस एंड अदर थिंग प्री रिक्वेस्टेड फॉर फाइलिंग एप्लीकेशन 95 बाय क्रेडिटर यू हैव टू चेक द लिमिटेशन बिकॉज डॉक्यूमेंट्री एविडेंस ऑफ गारंटी इन एलिजिबल फॉर्म ऑफ शुड शुड आल्सो बी चेक यू हैव टू इशू द डिमांड नोटिस अपॉइंट आरपी एंड गिव ऑल अवेलेबल थिंग्स देयर If no CRP, uh, if no CRP, can proceeding under PG uh, to CD be started? It's got already yes. We have told you. Section two is very clearly says if proceedings are going on at DRT, can petition against him be filed in uh, NCLT? Yes, if it's a PG. If CRP proceedings are going on at different places, so if uh, you know, this is quite possible that one uh, uh, PG has uh, uh, granted a uh, different companies and uh, different companies. Ki, लग लग जगह पे सीआरपी स्टार्ट हो चल रही है तो किस केस में जुडिशियल में इसका करा जाएगा तो इसमें ये डोमिनेटिंग व्यू यही आ रहा है कि जहां पे वो डेटर जब पर्सनल घंटर रह रहा है वहीं पे इफ मेनी एप्लीकेशन आई हैव आंसर्ड दिस थिंग Yeah, one is can uh, uh, same RP be pointed for more than one personal guarantors of same uh, CD? Uh, now uh, it is a yes, and uh, the, you know courts are also accepting it. And in fact, it's a cost effective also. In in one of my case, I, I, for a particular CD, I was appointed as RP for five personal guarantors. If a partner director from an IP is RP of CD, can he be appointed uh, as RP of personal guarantor? सर uh, uh, इस पे थोड़ा सा ये थोड़ा सा कंट्रोवर्शियल इशू है uh, जो मेरे पास आंसर है वो मैं आपके साथ शेयर कर देता हूँ आगे सारा बता दे बता दिए आई रिपीट यू नो दिस इज अ वेरी मटीरियल क्वेश्चन प्रैक्टिकली व्हाट हैपन इज डेट कि अगर एक आईपी के पास सीआरपी <coughs> का केस है तो वो यही चाहेगा कि उसका जो दूसरा पार्टनर या डायरेक्टर है उसके पास पर्सनल गंटर का केस चला जाए तो डू लॉ प्रोविडर्स डाट फैसिलिटी और नॉट तो दिस इज अ क्वेश्चन और जो इसके बाद मेरा आंसर मेरा आंसर है सर आप और बाकी पैनलिस्ट भी मेरे को इंप्रूव कर सकते हैं इफ ए पार्टनर डॉक्टर फ्रॉम एन आई पी इज आर पी ऑफ सी डी कैन ही ना है सॉरी दिस दिस वाज नॉट द माय क्वेश्चन ये तो रेगुलेशन 3 के अंदर क्लियर लिखा हुआ है ये माय यू नो दिस वाज योर क्वेश्चन व्हिच इज रिक्वायर्ड लिटिल बिट ऑफ थॉट एंड डिबेट इफ ए पार्टनर डायरेक्टर फ्रॉम एन आईपी इज आरपी ऑफ सीडी कैन द अदर पार्टनर डायरेक्टर बी अपॉइंटेड एज आरपी ऑफ पर्सनल गंटर तो जो मेरी लिमिटेड नॉलेज है जो मैंने थोड़ा सा आरएनडी करा है उसके मेरे अकॉर्डिंगली यस बिकॉज़ देयर इज नो स्पेसिफिक एक्सक्लूजन एक्सेप्ट एज पर रेगुलेशन 4 which is fix his appointment as he is if uh, he is representing any party in resolution process kehne ka matlab ye hai ki regulation 4 ye kehta hai ki jo bhi aap uh, the, the rp appoint kar rahe hain uska kuch interest nahi hona chahiye uh, jo bhi cd ka uh, uh, ke sath sorry cd ke sath nahi <coughs> jaise resident applicant hai uske sath uska kuch uh, uh, linkage nahi hona chahiye to is karke it does not hinder agar ek ip ka director जो ऑलरेडी सीआरपी प्रोसेस कर रहा है दूसरा डायरेक्टर अगर आरपी उसका अपॉइंट हो जाता है सर इस पे जरा प्लीज थोड़ा सा ये थोड़ा सा कंट्रोवर्शियल है प्लीज एनलाइटन करें इट इज इट इज अ अपरेंट कॉन्फ्लिक्ट ऑफ इंटरेस्ट बिकॉज़ यू आर हैव यू आर हैविंग यू आर वर्किंग अंडर सेम अंडर सेम अंब्रेला एंड इफ वन पार्टी इज लुकिंग आफ्टर वन एस्पेक्ट व्हिच इज कोरिलेटेड वेरी मच इंटरवोवन सीडीज वैल्यूएशन सीडीज रिजोल्यूशन सीडीज लिक्विडेशन versus personal liability of the guarantors they are very much correlated there cannot be double dip but there has to be recovery to the extent what is not uh, recovered from the cd so there is an apparent uh, conflict of interest between the, uh, of the same person and uh, if it, there is no provision that it should be treated as a part of ethical uh, professional uh, requirement that we should not try to be part of that we should recuse from that uh, assignment just to maintain the ias standards and set an example otherwise the allegations of uh, improprietary can come at and they, that would be there by any frivolous application for that ground will also be filed with the adjudicating authority if they had a conflict of interest they were and uh, working they were part of the same organization and still they took the contrary positions conflict thank you very much sir thank you very Hi, much this thank is my personal much. view so no, i resonate with your view sir absolutely
Thank you very much. You know, the, this view is absolutely yes. What I said, thank you very much for enlightening. Limitation applicability from the date of execution of papers or from the uh, date of revocation of guarantee? No, invocation. It should be invocation of guarantee. Yeah. Invocation of guarantee. Yeah. Invocation of guarantee. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. It would be from, normally it would be from the date of invocation of guarantee and subject to any period is given in that invocation notice then on the expiry of that time, the debt will become due and payable. Thank you very much. This way, I've already answered where to find the application. Honorable Sir Hubert has made very clear all personal guarantee application has to go to the NCLT only, nothing with the uh, DRT. Okay, sir, ye bhi aapne thoda le liya tha. Uh, can PG recover amount from CD later on on payments made by the creditor? So, <coughs> jo iske, uh, mein, jo meri limited knowledge hai, according to that, as per contract act under section 145, there is an implied promise to indemnify surety by the borrower for all rightful sums paid under the contract of guarantee. But section 31 of IBC says approval of registration plan is absolute and binding on all, including PG to CG. In that case, sums paid shall not be rightful and PG shall not be entitled to indemnify from the CD. So that's very uh, clear in the Lalit Kumar Jain. The Lalit Kumar Jain Supreme Court yes. has clarified this aspect that the resolution plan. Under the resolution plan approval uh, process, the liability is extinguished because of operation of law. That is section 31.1. And in, yes, sir. And not otherwise. Not a contractual uh, or any act or uh, of omission or commission or variation of terms of contract between the parties without notice to the uh, personal guarantor. So in that sense, uh, this put, uh, right of subrogation doesn't ex uh, remain there. Except there could be a situation only in resolution plan if you provide get the right to of the creditor will uh, the personal guarantor will still survive and to what extent only because it all depends upon normally all resolution plan provide for extinguishment of all liabilities of personal guarantors uh, uh, to recover from the uh, corporate data and the new management subsequently. Uh, sir, practically, I will share a little bit. We have done cases. In that case, no party is not a party. It is a new resident applicant. And uh, COC is the financial cutters. So they say that we have not a lender. We have a personal guarantor or a director. So this is why we will not give you liberty in this case. They say it will remain there. Na? That is what they yeah, say. Yeah, yeah. yeah they because, say it will remain there. And, and it is one of the reasons, uh, with due regards, uh, that the COC sometimes uh, get carried away with the undervaluation or early resolution, early liquidation of the corporate debtor because they have got a cushion of personal guarantors and their assets for recovery of their dues. That is what is our experience in some cases. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, I think I, I'm, I'm moving uh, a little bit fast now. Application filing date comes applicable. I've already discussed earlier. Default amounts are surprisingly is still one thousand rupees. And one side of thousand rupees and one side of one crore rupees. If we see, uh, you know, something like that, it's 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 a really uh, astonishing. Let it be put up. Uh, actually, what uh, what we request uh, in the earlier conferences also, Mr. Nipun will recall. When we had occasions, so what is happening? We are not a participative professionals in the legislative process. The consultation by IBBI is a good step uh, because this is the requirement of the statute. But we should try to bring the anomalies and unintentional uh, mistakes or gaps in the in a statute to the legislature by way of our representations from time to time. At least a time will come when they will take a call on that. Sir, our Nipun ji, our Mamta ji, and other, you know, the our members also, they are very keen to help IBBI. You, you know, you, you try to understand. Look, the IBC ka agar four pillars hai, four pillar में से एक IP को भी एक pillar माना गया है. तो एक अगर I, लेकिन जो ये pillar है ना, इस pillar से बाकी pillars बनते हैं. 
that that aspect has to be realized by the uh, yeah, IBBI and the judiciary and uh, advocates also because ek jab IBC ka kaam start hota hai to main jo responsibility jo main main jo duty hoti hai wo IP ki hoti hai to wo he knows ki kahan pe kis tarah ka music hai aur kaisa usko dance karna hai aur kis tarah se IBC ko more effective banaya jaye lekin sir unfortunately you are very right because you work at the ground level you encounter yes, the issues which are, are to be given answer either by the statute or by judiciary by making a suitable interpretation thereof but if you see you are, you are under supervision of ibbi you are they, they, of they, interest. they are regulator regulated by that so in in the legislative process or in the drafting process or otherwise no formal arrangement exists though a note is published and whosoever gives the suggestion gives but it should be given some process should be given that the mandatorily the, from this size of ip ips or this uh, body there should be suggestions necessarily before a, uh, a regulatory change or regulation is framed or law is amended so there should be some instead of consultative it should be some mandatory process and there uh, so that effective participation can take place even the proceedings before the standing committee of parliament on finance that is also an internal government to bodies explain their view so we require more participative legislative process सर इसमें ममता जी मेरे साथ थोड़ा सा एग्री करेंगे हम तो पार्टिसिपेट करने के लिए तैयार हैं आईबीबी के साथ मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ एमसीए के साथ आल्सो लेकिन शायद उनकी तरफ से कुछ इनविटेशन की कमी है दैट इज व्हाई आई पॉइंटेड आउट Okay, the statute should provide for mechanism. It should not be left to the mercy or discretion. Some necessary though those who are working on the ground, their feedback is is the most necessary because they come they come with so many situations, which the you know in the case of uh, Manish Jain or in the certain principle, the legislature cannot provide for our possible situations and outcomes of a provision and eventualities. so certainly we have to uh, have that we will have the gaps law will be uh, law will be, uh, actions will proceed <laughs> will be subsequent matlab the legislature will always be following the situations not uh, cannot make up with the situations in advance in anticipation and a good law can only be that which anticipates most of the situations and prescribes for that you थैंक यू वेरी मच सर सर हमारा ना एक परवीन जी हम एक ना अभी नेक्स्ट वीक के अंदर एक वेबिनार कर रहे हैं जिसमें हमारे निपुण जी स्पीकर हैं और मदान सर को भी हमने स्पीकर लिया है जिसका टॉपिक है बेसिकली की जो डीसी प्रोसीडिंग गेस आई पी एस के आ रही है तो सर आप सीए भी हो और हम आपको आई टेक लिबर्टी इन दू नो फ्रॉम प्रवीण जी हम सर आपको इनवाइट करना चाहेंगे तो प्लीज स्पेड सम टाइम फॉर दैट पार्ट ऑफ द स्टेट्यूट वी हैव नेवर रेड बिकॉज वी रेफर टू द मैटर टू द आई बी बी आई इन केस अदरवाइज आई वुड बी पार्टिसिपेंट इट वुड बी माई बिकॉज एज ए लर्निंग इंडिविजुअल आई विल लर्न यू सो मेनी न्यू थिंग्स we are honored sir i am honored i am honored i am honored okay sir ab next pe move karte hain uh, ek uh, thoda sa bada ek controversial issue aa raha hai ki is co borrower also grantor i explain to my uh, colleagues in this way that let's presume ki ek cd ne 1000 uh, uh, crore rupaye liya hua hai wo us 1000 crore rupaye ko jo bhi uske debtors are husband wife bacche ja uh, who serve the family they have granted uh, उसके साथ उसके जो डायरेक्टर्स है उनको एज ए को बॉर्डर बना दिया गया है तो कैन को बॉर्डर बी ए ग्रंटर और नॉट independent of that arrangement uh sir usme jo only only in the respect of same loan agreement loan transaction same loan agreement yes sir same loan agreement mamta ji please opinion on it so what purpose it would serve the property in any case uh, of the same why it is the necessity that they should become guarantor as well 
सर उसकी पर्पज यही सर हो रहा है कि वो वट इज है कि यू नो अभी ये आईबीसी के अंदर जो नोटिफाई करा गया वो सिर्फ यही एक्सपेक्ट कर रहा है कि पर्सनल कंट्रोल का कॉपरेट डेटा तो वो उनके अगेंस्ट केसेस फाइल कर रहे हैं ट्रीटिंग दम एज पर्सनल कंट्रोल विल दो लिमिटेड अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ लॉ आई डोंट थिंक दैट दे कैन बी ट्रीटेड एज गारंटर इफ दे आर को बोरोवर्स इन टर्म्स ऑफ लोन एग्रीमेंट स्पेसिफिकली एंड ऑल इफ दे व्हाटएवर मॉर्गेज और सिक्योरिटी दे हैव प्रोवाइडेड इन द कैपेसिटी ऑफ को बोरोवर that should uh, be binding on them too they cannot be treated as a guarantor kyunki guarantee arrangement one person cannot there are three, three parties one cod one creditor and one principal borrower in a guarantee as per 126 there are only two parties they cannot cannot have in my view ki uh, two two different capacities for the same transaction once one arrangement one arrangement itself is sufficient to take care of that transaction but uh, this arrangement is uh, you are sticking the the they are right not a third the person they are yeah. not a third person that is they are not a third person like. exactly 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 the that is why i highlight unless this thing. unless there could be a situation there could be a situation one more situation could be there uh, they are uh, they are co borrower to a limited ex- amount in that broader arrangement suppose and for the rep, higher amount they give a guarantee hmm. so wahi to hota hai hamesha मान लीजिए बोरोवर है एक ने 500 की लाइबिलिटी ली एक ने 200 की ली और एज ए गारंटर उसने 700 की दे दी या 500 की दे दी मोर देन व्हाट इज देयर देन दैट वुड डिफरेंशिएट बिटवीन द बट इफ द अमाउंट इज सेम लाइबिलिटी इज सेम एज अ को बोरोवर सो नोबडी कैन बी अ थर्ड नो गारंटर इन दैट केस व्हाट व्हाट माय माय अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ लॉ इज दैट इन केस ऑफ गारंटी अ थर्ड पार्टी हैज टू बी इन्वॉल्वड definitely a person can't give guarantee against himself the moment he becomes a co borrower because of any reason you know because of any reason then he he, he, he can never be a guarantor this See, is my understanding if, of if the co- in the capacity of co borrower <laughs> if he is having a limited liability not to the whole amount of the loan and for the loan amount exceeding is the loan liability he can the person can become a guarantor to the uh, other co borrower in respect of other co borrower who is having a independent liability other than the this one that can be a possible view thank you sir thank you banuchi yeah. banuchi i yes, think yes, yes. fast we to le liye then we will advocate <laughs> sir uh, mare ko har point pe itna lighten kar rahe hain in fact i am feeling proud ki mere jo points aa rahe hain iske andar वो इतने यानी कि प्रैक्टिकल इतने हैं कि उसके ऊपर सर हमारे को अनलाइटन कर रहे हैं एंड निपुण जी आई हैव यू नो यू कैन आल्सो पिन ऑन दैट बट एज एज इंस्ट्रक्टेड बाय ममता जी आई बी फिनिशिंग विद इन 5 मिनट मेरी तो अभी कितनी स्लाइड्स हैं ओ माय गॉड अभी तो 16 स्लाइड्स हैं इट इज मोर देन 50 स्लाइड्स आई यू विल कंटिन्यू सर आई विल कम इन वेयर एवर रीडेड सर यू मे कंटिन्यू सर अब ममता जी की इंस्ट्रक्शन है 5 मिनट तो आई हैव टू follow our instructions chaliye uh, you know the jaisa bhi comfortable lega we go and uh, yeah, get try to conclude it also because uh, praveen ji bhi kahenge ki humne aapko jo time slot diya tha you are exceeding that okay uh, I, i try to move it a bit faster uh, can debtor replace rp i am i am going to on un, un, unmute mode <laughs> no no <laughs> unmute our mind also because we won't be learning and you know we are here to learn from you and it's a really uh, you know praveen ji ne mare ko ek bahut achhi opportunity di hai aap se seekhne ke liye sir please please Absolutely. carry on uh, section 98 gives power to debtor to replace rp I, I, in my opinion it is a very conflicting sort of situation because agar hum parallel fusion coc ke andar bhi dekhe wahan pe bhi the two third ki uh, uh, financial creditors ko requirement hoti hai aur wahan pe uh, kisi bhi uh, you know the, the usko डॉक्टर्स को जब सस्पेंडेड डॉक्टर को कोई ऐसी पावर नहीं है बट इन दिस केस देर इज अ पावर यू नो दिस इज प्रैक्टिकली व्हाट वी डू प्लानिंग फॉर क्रिप्ट आई एम जस्ट मूविंग इट बिट फॉर डैट विदाउट यू नो रीडिंग इट टेक्स लॉट ऑफ टाइम जब मैं पीपीटी सब साथ शेयर करूंगा तो हमारे सब पार्टिसिपेंट्स इसको पढ़ सकते हैं These are absolutely practical aspects. You know, अगर आप अपनी 94 की एप्लीकेशन बना रहे हैं तो इन चीजों को आपको ध्यान देना पड़ेगा तभी आप अपने क्लाइंट का फायदा कर सकते हैं या आपके जैसे अगर 95 की एप्लीकेशन आ गई यू हैव टू मेनेज ऑल दिंग इवन यू नो देर सर्टन पॉइंट 
कि आपको क्रिप्ट के अंदर भी कुछ चीजें मैनेज करनी पड़ेगी ये कंट्रीब्यूशन है ममता जी की और स्पेशली ये जो जितने पॉइंट्स है उनकी कंट्रीब्यूशन इसके अंदर ज्यादा है तो आई एम रियली थैंकफुल टू हर कि उनका जो वास्ट एक्सपीरियंस है बिकॉज शी इज द फर्स्ट आई पी इन इंडियन हिस्ट्री और फर्स्ट ही इनके इन्होंने एक केस करा था आईबीसी का तो टिल डेट वी कॉल हर द मोस्ट एक्सपीरियंस आईपी पी एंड नाउ एडवोकेट ऑल्सो दैट्स परफेक्टली ट्रू इट्स एन ऑनर टू गेट दैट फ्रॉम यू थैंक यू सो मच Uh, you know these are some excluded assets uh, 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 you, you, we, we can you can go through application we have already discussed it at uh, quite length ki ye kahan pe kaise file hogi so accordingly this is there uh, jab hum log form a file karte hain data section 94 ke andar to uske andar kya kya uh, ye uske feature hai that i am you know i am noted on for the benefit of my colleagues 95 के अंदर जब फ्रेंचर कैटर एप्लीकेशन फाइल करता है उसके अंदर क्या क्या प्रोसीजर एस्पेक्ट है डेट आई नोटेड डाउन तो मैं पीपीडी शेयर करूंगा तो यू कैन गो थ्रू इट यस दीज आर द इंपॉर्टेंट सेक्शंस व्हिच इन माय ओपिनियन वर रिक्वायर्ड टू बी यू नो रीड वेरी डीपली जो ऑलरेडी हमने करे हैं सर इसके अंदर एक बड़ा यू नो यू नो अजीब सी सिचुएशन है कि हम पर्सनल गंटर के केस में डेटर 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 वर्ड्स और ये ललित जैन के केस में ये क्या कहते हैं एडवोकेट्स ने कहा भी था उनका एक ग्राउंड भी था लेकिन इस डाटा वर्ड को ना रेगुलेशन में ना रूल में और ना ही एक्ट के अंदर डिफाइन करा गया तो सर एनी 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 वन ऑफ अस वुड लाइक टू एनलाइटन मी ऑन दिस ऑफ द आई बी सी यू विल है because the definitions which have certain acts are given otherwise in the common parlance whatever is the understanding of a debtor in accounting or uh, that that would in the commercial world as as in is understood in the in general will have to be resorted to dictionary meaning if it not defined if it is defined in those acts which are specified in section 33 sub section 37 of ibc 2016 then you will have you can borrow the definition from that those places Sir is absolutely. I mean, I think uh, Sir has already drunk the whole IBC code. It seems knows <laughs> <laughs> it by heart. So it is uh, section. So for the benefit of all, very quickly, three thirty-seven, three by thirty-seven. It uh, absolutely categorically mentions what Sir has mentioned. Words and expressions used but not defined in this code, but defined in the Indian Contract Act, the Partnership Act. the scra act the sebi act and the recovery of debts act the llp act and the companies act shall have the meanings respectively assigned to them in those acts so aapko agar yahan pe koi meaning nahi milta hai but if it has been de defined in those acts which we mentioned in 337 then we have to pick it up from there thank you gupta ji manoj ji then my Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm moving forward. Yeah, yeah, please. If you want, I can close it down right now. Please. एक बार निपुण जी को दे देते हैं। हाँ, हाँ जी, हाँ जी, हाँ जी. Sir, निपुण जी, please. Sir, आप आप proceed करिए, मैं add कर रहा हूँ, sir. Time to time, don't worry, sir. नहीं, नहीं, निपुण जी, please. We are going, we are going fine with the flow. अमिता जी, would do, do you want me to speak on anything specific? Yes, then... uh, uh, Manoj ji and we were all very, also very keen, and uh, so was Parveen ji and the entire team. I'm sure Mr. Gupta will also like to hear you. We uh, there was one particular query that was doing rounds in our mind that in an, in this personal insolvency, it may so happen that the when the claims are getting filed, say for example, few bankers don't file the claim because of whatever reasons. now when this personal guarantor gets resolved with his debts the people who have not filed or the creditors who have not filed their claims against them also will the personal guarantor get a clarity which means get a clean slate or will their claim still hang around his neck we would like to know this because i think this is a very tense uh, topic Yes, Manoji and uh, Nipunji. Yeah, that will remain hang 
और अगर किसी का रीपेमेंट प्लान के अंदर या रजिस्ट्रेशन प्लान के अंदर उसका कुछ नाम नहीं आता वो नाम तभी आएगा जब अपना क्लेम फाइल करेगा तो वो दोबारा पर्सनल गारंटी रिवोक कर सकता है नाइनटी फाइव की एप्लीकेशन फाइल कर सकता है सर प्लीज आप मेरे को भी लाइटन कर दीजिए जुडिशियल acceptance may not be there for that application if you have missed the bus you have missed the bus legally other other recourse may remain under uh, other law if there is a law that is my understanding limited understanding but i will have to study further on that ki right to file a section 7 remains if you don't file the claim so sir uh, i uh, i agree with what gupta sir is saying Uh, i have a difference of view with respect to personal guarantors now let us assume one situation wherein during the cirp one financial creditor has not filed a claim so so if he has not filed the claim and if there is a resolution plan and then we can very well safely uh, rely on gansha mishra and the claim goes away hmm. that is that is what the logic of clean slate qua company is there now the question comes with regard to personal guarantor if that claim is not filed let us let us think that a situation where claim is not filed what we as a guarantor or we are, let's say as an advisor to the guarantor can do my view is like uh, it was happening in fact gupta sir is aware in some of the cases what was happening when personal guarantor used to file insolvency petition so that his assets are not sold his uh, how let's say residential property or shops or in the personal names are not sold what we used to do is we used to file our insolvency through uh, directly by a personal guarantor now some of the nbfcs or some of the banks they were saying you have just filed we are not bound by your interim moratorium and they used to proceed so what we used to do is we used to fi we file an application making that particular financial creditor as a party and getting a specific order that they cannot proceed so mm -hmm. in my view suppose a financial creditor has assuming not filed and i want to protect myself it is better that i make a, him a party and move an application because we have to end the story and start again so if we do not do it in wholesome then we are That's left a practical way of getting uh, the uh, get certainty about uh, all these issues that so, because they are a necessary party or proper party make uh, in the uh, petition and then their right will be closed correct so that that is a probable solution uh, mamta ji which i can think of and which practically we have done it and uh, we have got orders from the bench prohibiting the creditors who even are not uh, having this much duty to come and file a claim or mm -hmm. lodging a claim or moving an application and thereafter they are coming but why uh, okay we understand that just maybe a thread out of it why is it that the law did not provide because after all a human being will have that many assets he will not be able to get assets from the sky once it is resolved so why is it that here we did not discuss about the clean slate provisions as we have in other insolvency law part i i the what i, I, what I think probably do? that will also get evolved and i always say it's it's now it's an evolving law and it's a revolving law <laughs> <laughs> whatever you decide today may not be a good law tomorrow it right. always happens in uh, ibc in yes, fact I, i i remember in fact there is a very interesting case uh, i i hope uh, of rakesh agarwal if you have read nclat order when section 10 was filed mm. he was eligible to buy the company back mm -hmm. but by the time 29a came he became yeah. ineligible then nobody came forward to buy company went under liquidation. liquidation at the time of liquidation also he was ineligible because of 29a but subsequently msme amendment came <laughs> and he became eligible correct correct i know he became eligible but he could not again uh, when he filed so nclt amdavad bench took a view that no no you can't do it then the matter went into nclat and when nclat reversed the order 
allowed allowed because allowed. Allowed. they say that at only at the time of filing of the scheme it has to be checked yes, yes. but he was not eligible but today is eligible you give him a long right. rope when there is an uh, there is when at the proximate time to the effective decision making it should be the law you can't bar but like that means at the time of filing that subsequently he cannot rectify that is not a logical view yes that's not a logical view even under section 30 subsection 4 If you see twenty nine AC, the COC is empowered proviso second proviso there too empowered to give time to the uh, resolution applicant to rectify the uh, and eliminate section twenty nine AC thirty days and that will not be counted in section twelve also. Yes, sir. Absolutely, sir. In fact, uh, in eligibility, I remember, sir, when I I was appearing in SR Steel matter, the the issue was that they both were disqualified in the first round. new metal was disqualified because it had some relationship with the promoter group and arcelor mittal was disqualified because that there were two np accounts which were their related party uttam galwa and kss petro so they said that you rectify it and you can come back again supreme court said so 7500 crore so they so they only paid 7000 crores to get get an entry ticket to be yeah. eligible to do a voting yes. that was the argument in the court i was there in supreme court they said they have just got a ticket after paying 7000 crore <laughs> and the promoter said i am ready to pay more than 12000 crores though ultimately it got rejected because of 29a but yes this was a very good argument that they are only eligible because Absolutely. this qualification is removed by making the payment and making npa a performing asset and that to under uh, uh, power under article 142 Yes, yes. Not under Section Twenty Nine, because the time time had already expired. Yes. And you see, in the MBL infrastructure judgment. Yes, sir. I was about to say that. Again, the same thing has happened because it has been implemented. Uh, they have utilized that. Ultimately, the maximization of value of per vote editor principle has come in there. There. So all the private may, applications may. objecting to the resolution plans on ground of Section Twenty Nine A should be dismissed. और ममता जी और निपुन जी शायद जुडिशरी मेरे आपको इस तरह की शॉर्ट कमीज दे के एम्प्लॉयमेंट दी हुई है यू शुड बी थैंकफुल टू दैम द लाइटर साइड टू सी ओवर ऑल इंटरेस्ट ऑफ द कंट्री फर्स्ट येस सर येस what is the greatest fallacy after the implementation of resolution plan after 6 months any the promoter can come back there is no restriction yes so rather you are making cd as a trading asset by virtue of this lacuna as well as making an arc is eligible to bid i understand you are you are not going into the resolution of insolvency in that sense recovery in substance and uh, is the in some and substance Is the uh, that uh, you can say mantra has become the objective. Has In fact, sir, you are bang absolutely on the point because BLRC report, uh, gentlemen and ladies and esteemed participants, if one actually reads the BLRC report and even the objective of the law, what uh, Shri Gupta said is absolutely uh, very very much uh, actually relevant. That uh, somewhere probably we've. i don't know just just do not want to say it the exact words that is coming in the mind but we need to focus on on the objective of the code i think going forward uh nipuji one more question and then maybe we'll just open it for five minutes question and answer there was one case which was encountered by our dear president manoj ji that uh, we would just like to get a fair understanding for example there's a personal guarantor mr a he may have given guarantee to 10 different places with 10 different bankers and for maybe 10 different accounts he has 10 companies in which he is in the board now in one uh, the personal guarantee is definitely for all he cannot be chosen for a company b company c company separately so how does it actually happen does uh, the a companies lenders will file only to the extent of their dues their dues right uh, and then what remains behind how is that to be dealt with manoji If if you can actually uh, narrate your real life example and where we were, uh, 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 yeah yeah yeah. Thank you very much. Actually, what happened in one of my case, there were five renters. 
ढाई सौ करोड़ रुपए का उनकी गारंटी का उन्होंने अमाउंट दिया हुआ था तो जब उन्होंने यानी कि मेरे को जब उनकी वो रीपेमेंट प्लान उनकी फाइल करनी थी जब उनका जब क्लेम आया बैंक का मेरे पास तो बैंक ने ये करा ढाई ढाई सौ करोड़ रुपए का क्लेम पांचों ग्रंटर का ये फाइल कर दिया एंड आई वॉज ऑफ दिनियन की आप जो ये ढाई सौ करोड़ का क्लेम है इसको पांच में डिवाइड करके जो भी पचास करोड़ पे आता है इसको इस तरह से आप फाइल करो जहा यू नो एज ए आर पी आई वॉज ड्यूटी बाउंड की अगर उन्होंने ढाई सौ करोड़ का क्लेम फाइल करा भी है तो आई शुड रिस्ट्रिक्ट टू दिफ्टी करोड़ ओनली बिकॉज इन टोटलिटी टोटल ढाई सौ करोड़ रुपए का क्लेम है तो ये एक प्रैक्टिकल सिचुएशन आई थी अब प्लीज लाइटन अस ऑन ढाई सौ करोड़ रुपए का एक इंडिविजुअल के अगेंस्ट क्लेम होगा जब पचास करोड़ रुपए का उस इंडिविजुअल के अगेंस्ट क्लेम होगा रश्मि जी प्लीज यू ऑल्सो लाइटन अस यू आर ऑल्सो वर्किंग वेरी हार्ड इन दिस यू नो आई बी सी एंड अदर मेंबर्स कैन ऑल्सो लाइटन अस की कैसे करेंगे हम इसको I am looking forward for an answer from you or we from the panelist only. Uh, Gupta sir, would you like to? Liability of a guarantor is limited to the extent he has uh, uh, he has uh, subscribed to. It's not beyond that. If two uh, fifty crores out, if I have taken fifty crores liability, it will be restricted to that only. You can't fasten more than what he has committed to legally. Uh, uh, I think I am not able to convey properly. Uh, what I mean to say is that. कि yes. एक ढाई सौ करोड़ रुपए का उसका डेट आउटस्टैंडिंग था yeah. उसके पांच ग्रंटर थे पांचों ग्रंटर ने ढाई ढाई सौ करोड़ रुपए की लाइबिलिटी थी लाइबिलिटी की But there cannot be a situation you can't. If you have recovered 50 crores from one guarantor, so you can recover only 200 crores from other guarantors. You have recovered 250 crores from guarantor, you cannot recover any penny from other co-guarantors, co-securities. Because unjust enrichment, you cannot do that. You can't. You can't. Ah. That legally not possible. That provisions of law are also uh, very clear. And if we go into different provisions and rights and obligations of securities in the contract act itself, it is given in some of the provisions. I do not remember exactly the section is. The claim will no, be no, of it, that amount on each, but yeah. recovery will not be the same amount. What what I did is that in that case I a separate claim of each individual two hundred and fifty crore rupees. I might have done wrong also, but no, at the same time accepting of claim, I have given a proviso that jointly with others this amount can't exceed two fifty crores. Yes, yes, that is you have done rightly. After making thank this, thank you very much, sir. Thank condition. you very much, sir. Thank you. Making your mindset very clear. This is subject to this condition. Right. Thank, thank you. you. Thank. It means at least uh, I am a learned person. <laughs> thank you very <laughs> sir, much. Sir, what thank about the claim much. of other companies? I mean, like yes, Mamta ji just said, na, that if personally, you have seen one company's claim, and the other companies' claim, 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 देखिए वो कंपनी yes, yes, फाइल करेगी फाइल करेगा बैंकर बैंकर लेंडर जिसने उन कंपनीज को दिया हुआ है तो वहां पे भी ये सेम सिचुएशन आएगी अब सपोज कर लो मैंने ए लिमिटेड का आपको बता दिया अब बी लिमिटेड के गेस में भी उन्होंने गारंटी दी हुई है तो वहां पे 200 करोड़ की गारंटी है तो वो यानी कि 40 40 करोड़ रुपए की आएगी लेकिन जब उसका मैं क्लेम उस पर तो मान के चलो एक ही लेंडर है स्टेट बैंक ऑफ इंडिया है जिन्होंने दोनों कंपनीज के के लिए मेरे गेस्ट क्लेम फाइल करा तो मैं यही करूंगा कि मैं उनका 250 सौ प्लस दो सौ साढ़े चार सौ करोड़ रुपए का क्लेम फाइल करूंगा विद द प्रोविजो की इट कांट एक्सीड नंबर वन फॉर वन कंपनी टू फिफ्टी फॉर नंबर टू फॉर सेकेंड कंपनी टू हंड्रेड करोड़ रुपीज ज्वाइंटली विद अदर्स Thank you. Thank you so much. I think uh, we are uh, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. We are now moving towards the closure of the session. Rashmi, would yes, you? Yes, please, 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 please. Rashmi, uh, do the honors by uh, giving a vote of thanks to everyone. Just because... two points I would like to add. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Sir. yes sir. Just, we have to be uh, as far as the letter. There should be a difference of the letter of assurance or letter of comfort versus guarantee. Okay. If if it is a letter of comfort or assurance, it will not amount to guarantee. It cannot be enforced by a lender. Right. Just generally, as a parent company, we assure that it is our practice that we don't allow the subsidiaries to default, or generally, vague, which is not a legally binding obligation. Such uh, a letter of comfort cannot be treated as guarantee and cannot be enforced at law. 
and uh, other other point is that his as far as the delegated legislation is concerned they if you we if we read section 196 1t or 240 with 469 bracket mein two of companies act yes sir there is a wide difference in 469 to much wider delegated legislative powers have been given to the government hmm as compared to and uh, our regulations are also subject to rules by the central government right. so in ibc regulations cannot be in contravention to the substantive provisions of law as well as to the rules which are framed right. by the central government so and ibbi in most of the cases is exceeding its jurisdiction right so even we see the ministry of corporate affairs speci specifically the beneficial interest rules sir that you, is very very you, because they are, they are, this is a matlab uh, as a judicial person i would say this is a, uh, it is setting this setting a wrong precedent in a sense ki the parliamentary uh, scrutiny to a provision is uh, see an example of section 33 3 Hmm. Yes, of sir. IBC, yes, non-implementation. What the the uh, what the rights of a person? He can fo uh, force for non-implementation the liquidation, and simultaneously you will see sec regulation. Third, if I am correct, thirty nine nine, is which uh, of CIRP regulations? Yes, sir. The new one. Yes, sir. So both are uh, in direct conflict with each other. Which you have to be, a creditor is an aggrieved party. Uh, Whether he should go under Section Thirty Nine Nine, or uh, whether the provisions of Section Thirty Three Three should prevail? Yes, sir. Yes, so, sir. so there are so many aspects which need to be considered. And you can, actually, what Mr. Shridhar Ji said is right. And sometimes, you know, we as professionals lose sight of it because we are not looking at things holistically. No, uh, one 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 great tragedy that you can't read. You will everyone, whether is a judicial officer. or whether it is a practitioner will miss the miss uh, the things if we don't in, in the current scenario if we don't read reg, ibc as well as regulations together mm, right. latest i would just try to i am like i am trying to write a article an article on this latest decision the where the operational debt less license fee will be treated as a yes, operational sir. debt larger bank yes sir that view i think we i took in first of three orders when i joined in kolkata yes. it will be in, a, in ignoring the mumbai bench yes. decision but even if we have seen the five uh, larger bench consisting of five honorable judges they have not referred to section 51 513 clause e of clause c and regulation 31 and 32 are a consequence of 513 clause e absolutely and uh, operational debt will come in the earlier clause of 51c it is a part of the business expense yes sir so in, even the counselors or advocates with due regards uh, they are not updating themselves uh, in a sense to assist the bench and uh, because what is happening <laughs> still there can be a controversy because we are relying on a regulation which is in, input or direct or what explanation which is not relevant all the expenses relating to the operational debt will fall in the business expense itself if i am running if i am having a personal property paying for that will not form in 513 so that is the differentiation but in recent decision i was sorry to miss that even the judges or the councils appearing they did not assist the bench in that direction थैंक यू थैंक यू सर आई एम इन सिंपली और सर जिस तरीका से आपने मतलब यू नो एक एक सेक्शन एंड एक एक लॉ का पॉइंट लेकर एक्सप्लेन किया है वी हैव मच 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 मोर लर्निंग टू डू फ्रॉम यू एंड आई रिक्वेस्ट प्रवीण जी के एक सेशन आपके संग करे ताकि यू नो विथ सो मच इंट्रीगेसीज एंड लॉज एंड एक्ट को थोड़ा लेकर के साथ में पढ़ना और उसको समझना और फिर लॉ के एंगल से भी उसको देखना दिस इज देर इज सो मच टू लर्न फ्रॉम यू सर एंड ऑल बिकॉज ऑफ I always feel I am like a pen. Whatever Krishna wants to write through me, I write. I am not the doer. And I would require my phone number and connects are available with Praveen ji. Everyone is have any time, every time welcome. Because you, I would be in that process benefiting myself and reaching my knowledge. Hmm. Understanding of law. 
नहीं सर वी आर मच मतलब आपने ये अपॉर्चुनिटी दिया है तो हम इसका फायदा जरूर उठाएंगे और आपको जरूर तंग करेंगे सर वीरेंद्र गुप्ता जी फॉर टेकिंग आउट हिस्स टाइम for this webinar and guiding us with his matlab experience matlab and the way he matlab uh, detailed and de- detailed deliberation on each and every point from the jud- adjudicating authorities point of view from the law point of view from each and every section as quoted by him it is uh, like i have been just struck by awe and and the whole uh, the all the participants who are uh, matlab hearing this today is actually getting benefited a lot from this session i am also thankful to our panelist dr mamta binani mr nipun singh bhi mr manoj anand ji for such a nice deliberation and a wonderful session on how manoj ji has prepared an ppt and nipun ji has given you know uh, uh, his suggestions uh, wherever he found it necessary and uh, the most important uh, point has been taken care of as the limitation thing and then how the matlab other things matlab which has been recorded all matlab all the points have been i think taken care of and there's still the as nipun ji had rightly said a evolving law so we are need to see matlab ki kya isme aur nikalta hai and then i'll request uh, parveen ji to you know have some more such sessions on this and uh, so that we are you know continue continue on the same panel and uh, the i and parveen ji aap kuch bolna chahenge to you are most welcome thanks so much ji i uh... very much uh, thankful to rinder gupta ji who have uh, uh, explained very nicely what to what a uh, lot to law regulations and uh, all those and uh, to our panelist uh, mumta binani ji nipun ji uh, <coughs> mukul ji manoj ji and especially rashmi ji and neha ji who will organize very efficiently and uh, our participants uh, to contribute their valuable times thanks a lot we will in touch for further webinar uh, upcoming webinars thank, thank you sir thank you thank you so much thank you thank you sir thank you thank you sir thank you sir thank you sir thank you thank you sir बारह आदमी है जमते थे होस्ट को मैं एंड कर लेकर दिए